Hello, what is up my friends? Welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are quarantined. We are getting a little stir crazy. So what do we do? Let's fire up an episode of Freshly Brewed. Yes, the sporadic show that will be a more concrete thing in the future. Hashtag soon. But um, the show where I just brew up a deck. And we got two brews today. We're doubling up. We're doubling up. That's right. I spent the morning kind of relaxing and brewing. And uh, our first deck today is Naya Slide. Now, you remember, may remember, or may not remember, months ago, I tried out a Bant Slide deck on a Freshly Brewed. It was pretty sweet. Um, of course, Slide referring to Astral Drift. Now, for those who are not very, very old like me, and if you are, much respect. Astral Slide was an uncommon from Onslaught that was effectively what Astral Drift is, just simpler. Uh, through my enchantment, whenever that was actually whenever any player cycled, uh, you could flicker something and have it come back at the end of a uh, end of turn. And Astral Slide was a heavily played card, constructed, uh, very very good card. And Astral Drift from uh, last year's Modern Horizons is a, an homage to that. Uh, functionally similar, um, it is only one sided. So whenever you cycle a card, you may exile any creature in the battlefield, and if you do. That creature comes back at the beginning of the next end step. And it also actually has cycling itself and then triggers off of itself too. So a little extra a little extra oomph for your extra copies. You can cycle them and so on and so forth. And very, very powerful board control card. Um, it's hard to really quantify how powerful this effect is uh, when you untap with it in play and you basically just control the board for the rest of the game as long as you have cycling cards. And thankfully, of course, cycling cards, well, they cycle, so you get another card off of them. So it's not hard to chain them together. So, you know, they have a Death Shadow, flicker it. They have a this, flicker it. They have a token, flicker it. And of course, you can flicker your own creatures as well. Now, my, my bad version that I tried with this wasn't playing any creatures. It's mostly relying on the, the Drift to deal with my opponent's things. We found that to be a bit limiting. Uh, typically, Astral Slide decks play some sort of creature with a benefit. Um, often, it was Eternal Witness, is you can keep looping your witnesses and getting back plow under things like that. Uh, Exalted Angel was a popular one where you'd play a face down Exalted Angel, which is basically a Bane Slayer Angel with Morph, and you'd slide it and it would come back face up. Pretty cool. So this version of a deck, we left the blue behind, and um, we're adding a little bit of red here, and we're trying to push the engine all around the cycling land. So of course Tranquil Thicket and friends rejoin the modern format. I guess join the modern format with Modern Horizons as well, uh, as did Renin Six. So you can use Life Malone and Renin Six to keep returning the cycling lands to your hand. Now at Life Malone, that forms a pretty good draw engine. Um, it's actually pretty insane. You play Life Malone, you bring back three cycling lands, and then cycle all three of them, and Life Malone becomes five mana, draw three cards whenever you want, stretch. Broken up however you want as well. So Life Malone. A little more mana intensive than Renin Six, but we have this nice engine here of Renin Six and Life Malone plus Cycling Lands to ensure that we never run out, ensure that we keep drawing cards, we keep making land drops. So that's our engine. We have a Renin Six in play and an Astral Drift in play. We're going to be doing some pretty good board control stuff. And uh, we have some creatures to slide as well for our own purposes. We have uh, one Wall of Blossoms, one Wall of Omens. Just an early blocker, another thing to do on turn two. And then, of course, later on in the game, we can keep sliding it out, drawing more cards. It's pretty cool. We have... Renegade Rallier, one of the cooler cards to slide because uh, triggers the Revolt trigger. Obviously, it left the battlefield, and then it comes back, and I, we can return uh, Renin Six to the graveyard, return uh, lands to the grave from, from the graveyard. So nice effect there. It can ramp us possibly, as well as getting back Renin Six and do other things like that. We got Knight of Autumn, which is uh, can do a number of things. Obviously, a very versatile card. I uh, can gain life against aggro decks. Can kill artifacts and enchantments. Uh, Ad nauseum. You can just keep killing them over and over and over again with the with the slide effect can be a beater if we need to, and of course, Eternal Witness, the OG, and uh, she can bring back whatever we want, how often as we want it. The last big one is Thrag Tusk, and whoever, anyone who's ever played Standard when Thrag Tusk was legal with Restoration Angel, uh, blinking a Thrag Tusk is pretty nice. Uh, you get a token, and you gain five more life, and we can keep doing it over and over and over again. So that's our creature base. Uh, our spells, for the most part, uh, we are playing, of course, the, the engine here. We have our Astral Drifts, we have a few removal options here. We've got a couple cast outs, recycle, of course. We've got a, a Wings of Abandon. We can't play one mana cards. Get to that in a second. We've got a, a Wrath of God to mop up occasionally, and a Nahiri the Harbinger. Just like an extra Planeswalker, removal spell, 
Uh, also a looting effect with uh, our life from alone, so you can bring back lands and then just discard them and so on. Pretty cool. And of course, if we have to, we get ultimate for for Thrag Tusk. Um, but the real big uh, secondary mode of this deck is we're a Chalice deck, and Chalice the Void's a powerful card. It's very hard to use because it's got a pretty serious restriction. If you want to play Chalice on one, well, can't play any one drops. So we're already not playing one drops. You know, this deck might have, might have wanted Path to Exile, uh, some things like that, but we can avoid the one drops pretty easily here. You know, a lot of our one mana effects are cycling effects, which obviously are not affected by Chalice of the Void. So we're a Chalice deck. And then we have four copies of Street Wraith. Now this one's really cool because this allows us to tap out for a creature and still protect it with slide. So we can go turn three slide, turn five Thrag Tusk, and they go to kill it or whatever, and we can Street Wraith and cycle it for free. We could also go Drift on three and then defend ourselves for free with Street Wraith. So pretty cool card here, but life loss is obviously a mild concern, but we have Night of Autumn, we have Thrag Tusk and things like that. So deck seems pretty cool, 27 lands. Uh, we are playing a Field of the Dead, which we're already playing all these different land types anyway. And we have Ren and Six and Loam to find it and get it back. A Ghost Quarter and a Field of Ruin, also very good with Ren and Six and Loam. Uh, smattering of Basics and non-Basics, Fetch Lands, etc., etc. Uh, Cyborg. I, mean, I feel like I forgot a Cyborg card. I feel like I thought of a, a really good Cyborg card while I was having lunch today. And I, I now I don't remember it. Oh, man, it's going to piss me off. Probably remember it around like round three or four. So I, I built this like this morning. While I was having lunch today, I thought of a really good one. Ooh, that's going to come back to get me. So, Cyborg's got uh, a couple creatures to use with our slide. Uh, Obstinate Baloth, of course, a good card against Liliana uh, of the Veil, as well as Aggro Dex. We can slide it, so on and so forth. Avalanche Riders. If we ever get to a spot where we are playing Avalanche Riders and we are sliding it every turn, I'm going to be a happy man. All right. Uh, third Night of Autumn. He's got to kill stuff. Two Mind Sensors against the uh, Titan Dex, things like that. Um, we got a few Celestial Purges, a little extra removal that costs more than one. Uh, an explosives, a couple damping spheres, and a blast zone for a little extra removal, a little combo hate, and uh, man, I'm really gonna be mad about the card that I forgot. You gotta write things down, folks. You know, when you get you're getting to your old age, you know, uh, thoughts are fleeting, Just gone forever. So I'm sure I'll remember it in like round two or three today, and be very sad about it. Uh, we had a re resub there. Uh, e Equiven, thanks for resub. Ten months, appreciate that. Uh, Gab, thanks for following. Appreciate that. Eviscerating you, thanks for following. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Lego! Renegade Rallyer and Modern, modern finally. 18-month reset for Lego. Appreciate that. And, uh, let's get going here. Alright? Freshly Brewed. What's up, Smite Stalker? How's it going, everyone? Welcome. Hopefully everyone's holding up. Uh, it's a crazy world out there. It's a crazy, crazy world. Do -na 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 -na. Do -na 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 I used to have a piano, but don't anymore. Maybe I'll learn it. Ain't leaving the house, so uh, might as well learn it, right? All right, so the machine is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com. CoolStuffInc.com, number one source for all your game shopping needs. CoolStuffInc.com. Promo code Jim5, 5% off your order, and a free Jim Davis Goblin token with your order as well. Not going to miss out on that. Really, really cool. And most importantly, you're home from work. You're hanging out. And uh, got nothing to do. Tons of free content every single day on CoolStuffInc.com. Every single day. Free content, no paywall ever. I do a video Monday. I do an article Friday. Last Monday's video was all about Four Color and Soul and Pioneer. And uh, there it is. CoolStuffInc.com. I do a video article every Monday. A written article every Friday. Get on there. All right. Free content every single day. And great deals as well. Let's go. Um... The one from Donnie Darko. I assume it's not the Tears for Fears version. Pat Resub says, Thanks for all the YouTube videos. Keep me sane. I'll work from home. Love it. Uh, Edge of Autumn is not good enough. Sacking a land is far too high cost. So we're on the draw here, and our hand's a little mopey. But we're going to keep. Um, I am a little concerned with this deck's ability to defend itself on the first turn or two. Uh, the blue version of a deck had Force of Negation, which was pretty good in the deck. And we're lacking that. So Max says... How has social distancing affected my stream line of work? It's kind of weird, actually, because you would think that, like, wow, that's nuts for you, Jim. You work from home, and the industry you're in is entertainment, and people are stuck home with nothing to do. Great. But the corollary to that is everyone and their mother is streaming. 
Um, I've never seen so many people streaming at once. So definitely, it's it's a it's a, a two two bladed sword. You know, it's definitely been interesting, but it's been fun. I'll be doing a lot of content over the next few uh, few months, obviously, and uh, we're ho we're hoping to move in two months. This if this better not screw it up. Okay, uh, we're playing against Mill, or possibly uh, like a Dredge Vine deck. Um, Hedron crap. Interesting. Um, let me draw another land. Tilt. Um, I guess we're just going to play a fetch land and say go. Um, we could cycle Wraith. We, we have no plays on one anyway. So, yeah, everyone who, who's ever streamed is like, well, I'm home. Might as well try streaming again. You know, so saturated market currently, but it's good. It's good. Yes, Tog. I'll be on probably almost every day, honestly. Yeah. Nicole and John. Nicole, Nicole's off from work. John's off from school. And uh, my work follows me everywhere. Overgrown Tune, untapped. And they're going to mill themselves. So they're playing the Dredge Vine deck, um, which we don't really have a ton of graveyard hate, honestly. We, uh,. Yeah, I mean, we don't really have much Graveyard 8, realistically. This is probably going to be a pretty tough one. Uh, however, they're just hard casting Blood Gas, so it could be worse, I suppose. Um, so that's not too bad. So we want to maintain our life total here, but I also kind of want to cycle. Uh, I guess we're probably going to get, like, a Temple Garden. Or, like, we'll get, um, we'll get a, a Sacred Foundry so we can play uh, Forest and Renin 6 on 2 here. Um, so let's get Sacred Foundry. Do you want a shock? Is it really worth the damage? They're going to, like, creeping chill us and stuff and just do nasty things to us. I mean, we get to get the steep back off of Ren 6. Although, also, poking the Blood Gas is not the end of the world. It, um, it could possibly enable Amalgams and stuff, but it also defends the Ren and 6. It's funny, it's a matchup where I think that, uh, Wall of Omens is going to be really, really good if we can find one. Oh, shock. Alright, well, we're drawing a lot of lands here, uh, unfortunately. There's your drift. That's actually pretty good. So, let's get uh, let's get this ball rolling then, right? Let's get uh, get Ren and Six online. Play Ren and Six. And we're going to plus. We're going to plus. Next turn, we can play the drift and use the Street Wraith to defend the Ren and Six, which is pretty good. And if we get to untap with the Drift and play, I'm actually feeling pretty good about things. If we can start flickering this Thrag Dusk. Alright, there's a Supplier from our opponent. Hopefully their dredges aren't too good here. There's an Amalgam, so if we had killed the Blood Guest, uh, we would have been at the mercy of this Amalgam. And they have a Dakmore Salvage, so... Like a pretty medium hand from them, which is good because they're on the play and their Explosive Hands probably destroy us. And they hit three lands. Very good. Very, very good. Alright, so Ren and Six is strong. He can take it, or they can take it, or whatever whatever it is. Tree person thing. Um, let's get ourselves just a mountain, I guess. What's up, uh, Lu Lucanio? Am I saying that wrong? I'm probably saying that wrong. I'm saying it wrong, let me know. Uh, this is the first time I'm playing with this deck, yes. I built it this morning. I have played a similar deck before on stream. It was a Bant Slide deck, which was pretty sweet. Uh, I'm just going to you know, get a mountain. Um, so it is similar to that deck, but um, I, it's my first time playing this deck. It's freshly brewed. The whole point of the show, freshly brewed, is that I, I just play deck. Just fire it up and play. You know, and you get to experience all of the ups and downs of deck building. Um, the very early deck building process is, is very interesting and very illuminative um, as far as kind of figuring out how things work, why things don't work. Um, so that's the point of this show. Freshly Brewed is the uh, the stick. Lucino? Luciano? Luciano. And Cole, seven-month resub. Oh, my, oh my, my friend, appreciate it. It's like Lu Luciano, Luciano. Trying, Luciano, got it, perfect. 
Luciano. If I'm ever saying stuff wrong, please just yell at me in chat. I don't pronounce things very well. And while it's funny to laugh at me, I would like to pronounce people's names right. Just a courtesy that I can extend. So, we have the Wraith here working exactly as intended. Uh, able to defend ourselves for the one turn we tap out for Drift. And then we're going to get to untap. Carrion Feeder? That's pretty cool. Um, I'm actually going to cycle with Wraith now. Because we could, if we wait, they can just sack the Blood Gash to the Feeder and then get back the Amalgam on a land drop. So, let's just do this right now. So, pay two life. Cycle the Blood Guest. And we're going to want to work ourselves up to sliding out our Thrag Tusk, which is a pretty good end game to work towards. I'd say this game's going very, very well for us, honestly. So far, proof of concept, it's working! I also miss Pat with the resub. Uh, I, I got you, never mind. I, the alerts aren't working right now, so nothing's... I don't know what's going on. All right, so their Blood Guest is safely in exile. They have a 1-1, one, one, which can poke Ren and Six again, but not too big of a deal. And then we got two Cyclers. They're going to mill some cards here. They hit a Blood Guest. All right, so unfortunately they hit a Blood Guest, and now they can uh, make a land drop, get back the Amalgam, get back the Blood Guest. So next turn's going to be a little messy, but they're going to Hard Guest. Wait, wait, they have no land? No land. Whew. Oh, boy. All right. So, untap. And we've drawn a lot of lands. Uh, we've drawn a lot of lands here. But also sliding the uh, the carrion feeder is pretty nice, too. So, we can, like, poke the Narcomuba and then just slide out the carrion feeder and the blood guest. Um, that's kind of cool. Now, we're going to have to do it on their turn. So I guess we're just like gonna play a land tap here and say go. Yeah, I think I like minusing. Minus the rain six. So we'll just play tap land. Just minus on this. Just say go. They'll sack the feeder, totally fine. Rain and six and Astro Drift is a nice little uh nice little uh little synergy here. Now I gotta remember these even though the Thicket and Step are technically lands, they're kind of spells in our deck. You know, we don't really ever want to play them as lands. You know, our goal is, is mostly the fact that they're a land is relevant towards Life Malone and Ren and Six. It's not necessarily the most important thing, like, as far as actually being a land, but... All right, so they're going to venture deeper. And they're going to mill three Glimpse the Unthinkables and a Secret Keeper. So we've been pretty fortunate that their dredges have not been very good this game. Uh, so that's good for us. We could slide on our end step, but why? Why not just do it on their turn, you know? All right, so beginning combat step. Um, line of attack. The reason we, we, we want to slide on our turn is to try and draw a playable spell and then play it. But, all right, so let's cycle. Uh, start with the thicket. Slide out the carrion feeder. Yes, please. Street Wraith, sure. That's actually great, because now we can play Thrag Tusk on, on, an, uh, on a tapping out and then cycle it. That's fantastic. All right, and cycle this. Yes, please. Did it in that order so they couldn't sacrifice it. Draw Chalice of the Void. That's pretty good. Um, a lot of their deck costs one. All right, it's end step. These things come back. Hmm. Let's see what we draw here. Playing Chalice on one is kind of appealing. Um, another Thrag Tusk? Whew. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. What do we want to do here? I guess they don't have many spells. Like, they only have two cards in hand. They can't have that many spells to, to go for anyway. Like, they didn't play the Secret Keeper because so they can't play it, but it doesn't really matter. Let's just play Thrag Tusk. So let's get a Plains. What's up, Teddy? Thanks for following. Appreciate that. If you haven't followed the stream with that follow button, of course, watching on YouTube, make sure you follow in there. Welcome, welcome, welcome. My name is Jim Davis. Today is Freshly Brewed, the show where I play decks that I just brewed up. And we're playing Naya Astral Slide today. Naya Astral Slide. And we have a fun Pioneer deck to play later also. And uh, so far, the deck is actually kind of kind of working pretty good. Now, we're going to play this. I think we're actually going to slide it out immediately, get an extra blocker. 
So we'll do this on our turn, uh, just so we get the extra blocker and it comes back. So so flicker the Thrag Tusk, get a 3-3 three, three for leaving, and then uh, we drew a Knight of Autumn. So I think we're firmly in control of this game. What's up, Robert? Two-year resub. Thanks, Robert. I appreciate that. Yeah, this game is uh, feels pretty over. Um, they can't really stop us from flickering Thrag Tusks, and next turn we're going to play a Thrag Tusk and have a... Yeah, that's just the Duchess game. That was sweet. That was... We should stop right now. What should we do, folks? Should we just stop right now? That worked far too well for me to be... I, I feel uh, a false sense of um, accomplishment here where, like, it's not going to be that good this entire league, but it felt really good, so I kind of want to just hold on to that. What do you think? Should we keep going? Undefeated. Like, our sideboard is not very good against them. We don't really have much uh, much graveyard hate um, because we, you know, cards like Rest in Peace, Relic of Progenitus, we want to use our graveyard, so those don't really work. Um, but, all right, so Chalice of the Void does seem good against them. I guess we're going to leave that in. So we want, like, take out the cast outs probably. It's funny because the, the wall blossoms are kind of like meh. They seem really good against them. All they have is unkillable X or two X's and three X's. So we want, I think the Baloths. Um, I think four fours of the game life are good. The purges are good too. Um, it's in a Hiri. Even on a Hiri exiles things, just think it's kind of clunky. Wrath is also pretty bad because frankly, they just, we don't have a way to exile things. So yeah, our opponent definitely didn't run too well that game. I think any good hand they have on the play probably crushes us, but their hand was just like medium on the play. Um, so, definitely, obviously, in our favor. It's good to, it's very important to notice things like that. And not just be like, man, my deck's great, I'm awesome. You know, people often notice when their opponents get lucky. They don't necessarily notice when their opponents don't run well. It's important to notice that, too. So, want some cyborg graph diggers cage? Definitely a possibility. And yeah, this is the first draft, folks. That's why we're all here to work together on it. So, graph diggers cage is a good idea. Take a note on that one. Graph diggers cage is a good idea. So, cut the clunksters. I think just flickering Baloth against them is really good. Um, Blood Moon is interesting. Um, Blood Moon is interesting. We are on the draw this game. I think maybe we'll bring that in on the play and try and cheese them out in game three. Maybe. We'll see how it how it looks. Um, Blast Zone, Damping Sphere. I don't think we need another Night of Autumn. Uh, or explosives. Yeah, they're 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 not dredging, but I think Edge of Autumn is, is you can't. We want to have every single land in play possible. We want to cast Thrag Tusk on turn five. You know, it costs five. It's a lot. So I don't think ever sacrificing a land is a reasonable thing to be doing. If not Blood Moon now, Blood Moon when? Uh, for land decks like Titan and Balakit and and Tron, stuff like that, you know? That's the idea. Okay. Um, so we have a Chalice. We have a Red and Six. I'm pretty scared on a draw here, honestly, but I think we're just going to Chalice on one. I hope it's good enough. Um, this hand's not great. Just like, I don't know how much better our hands can get. We're going to keep. We'll play Thicket on one. And then we'll get uh, a Sacred Foundry on two and cast Chalice. All right, turn one, Venture Deeper. And they whiffed completely again. Just no relevant graveyard cards. So, sweet. All right, so we'll play land. We, we, we can play, but there's your lands. You can play them as land sometimes, you know? Hey, buddy. What's up? Drake Haven's cool. Uh, as I said, I, I tried a banned version of his deck a few months ago. It's on my YouTube under the Freshly Brewed tab. I played like one or two Drake Havens. They were okay. It's obviously very slow. Let's see what they do here. Uh, probably get a glimpse. And we'll, uh, we'll hope their glimpse is just not very good. Really can't do much about it, so... 
Jim D. Fear. Jim D. Fear. No. Supplier? Okay. Supplier hits. Land, land, nature's claim. Man, they're just... Eight cards in the bin, all blanks. This is how these decks often work. You know, self-mill decks. Very uh, very high ceiling, pretty low floor. So they're they playing Gravecrawler. So our Chalice on one, while not ideal that we uh, obviously, you know, are not getting the one drops they played, it's still uh, going to be live. Ren and Six is also, like, can poke off these uh, these doofers here. All right, it's Chalice on one. What would be better, Punishing Fire or Lightning Rift? I think Lightning Rift. Lightning Rift is really, really good. Uh, Prime, that probably shouldn't happen. All right, so they uh, they glimpsed, and they hit some Grave Crawlers, which is awesome for Chalice. And they hit... Uh, Really, it it's a bunch of, bunch of grave cards. We have a blood gas too, but they missed a land drop too. So, we have some work to do here. That was actually really good. Uh, that was actually really good. I was gonna run in six and just kill a uh, a grave crawler, but wall omen feels awesome. Yeah, all right. Yes, happy St. Patrick's Day, everyone. Obviously, not the uh, St. Patrick's Day we were probably all hoping for, but you know, it's fine. I'll right, we'll play a tap land here. Um, Containment Priest would be silly with this. So now, now they hit um, they hit a Vengevine, which is bad because now they can just they can still cast Grave Crawler, so they can get back their Vengevine, um, which is annoying. But we can uh, we can work with this. You know, we can start sliding it, set up our Wings of Abandon, things like that. So this is a hit, this is a hit, but we get to, to drift and slide something next turn. So there's a blood gas too. That's a little scary. It's funny, when I put in the wall of omens and the wall of blossoms, I was like, eh, this card's pretty mopey, but I'll play a few, I guess. And it's been really, really good here. Alright, so we're at nine. Uh I mean I guess street rate is like it's better than taking four, you know? Um, I guess we're just playing Drift and leaving up Seclude Step, Steep, Step, Steep. We're going to eat. Uh, we're going to get ourselves my basic planes. Just going to find a, uh, a Thrag Tusk or something, you know? So play Astral Drift. Uh... Say go. If you got three cards in hand, if we can get this Ren and Six down, start poking at the smaller creatures. Could be in like okay shape here. All right, so we're going to block this. We're going to cycle the secluded step. Take out this. Draw obstinate bail off. That's a good one. We can't cast it yet though, which is concerned. We only have, we only have one green, which is maybe a, a misfetch on my part. But, um, and we're gonna pay two to not take two here, I guess. Um, we'll go to six, then we'll go to five. It's pretty scary. It's honestly pretty scary going to five. But I think we want to draw the card anyway. Just have a chance to uh, cast this Bailout next turn. If we can get Bailout and play, I feel pretty confident about we, we, we can win this game. So I'll we'll just do it. Cycle this. Flicker this. I guess that could be worse. I mean, it, it does cycle in theory, but... So, go to five. They have four cards in hand. They got stuff... Oh, they got a fetch land, too. I mean, it might, be, might just be, like, hard casting Creeping Chills at this point. It's scary. Scary. No, we're not playing Anger. We're not very heavy on red sources. Um, 
I think we're also pretty good against creature decks usually, so this is a yeah, so there you go. casting creature chill. So big draw step here, big draw step. Uh looking for I guess the basic fars, I don't even know. Yikes. Um so we can flicker three things here and and not die, but it's also pretty likely they have another chill in their hand or something like that. Which is pretty gross. Um I guess we just say go. We can cycle the drift. Am I better off just playing the drift? No, right? Because then I can only I can only, I can only flicker two things then. And then I go to one. That's scary. Um, if we cast Ren and Six. We can't do enough other things to actually stay alive. So. We could, like, kill this, cycle this, block this, go to one. Going to one sucks, though, because we can't get... We need to get double green in play, too. Uh, which is really bad. Pretty awkward game. Yeah, I, I'm feeling another chill, also. Um, you, like, ping one... Slide one, block one. It's just going to one is the problem. We don't have any way to get uh, another second green source to bail off. We could... Can't witness. Cycle drift. Cycle drift is two flickers, one flicker, three, and block. We could stay at two. Yeah, we're going to get a go here. I think we're probably dead to a, a chill of some kind, but... Thanks, Kyle. Appreciate that. Freshly brewed. As you see here, it's turn six. You've missed two land drops. And like I was saying earlier, making those land drops pretty important. Uh, that's why Edge of Autumn is not good. Oh, I screwed up. I should have blocked the supplier. I'm so stupid. I don't want to slide the supplier, obviously. I screwed up. I don't think we're winning this game anyway, so it's fine. That's really bad. The point is we can't take one because we got to fetch a green source to play Obstinate Bailoff. Very few of our green sources are pain-free, so that's why going to going to, to one is so bad. I just blocked the wrong thing stupidly. Blood Moon is interesting. Blood Moon is certainly interesting. Uh, it does like just turn off their ability to play spells completely. It's honestly, it's not great for us either. You can see our board in play right now, you know. But all right, let's cycle this. Let's just, you know, make him. Um, we're definitely hitting hitting a chill off a of supplier, like for sure. Just no doubt. Dum dum block. Goodbye. Goodbye. Draw another double green card. Tilt. All right. Not happy about this. The old miss block. What's up, Schmibble? Yeah, Zibby's sleeping. Zibby is taking social. Oh, he's not sleeping. He's eating. Oh, that's weird. Zibby. Zibby eating. All right. We are gonna flicker of a stupid thingy. Not not smart. And draw. Another non-land? It's like 29 lands in this deck. Uh, so if we draw... Exactly a, a fetch land we can cast bail. I think we just still just die though. I don't think we uh, I don't think we have any outs anymore, realistically, because even if we can play the bail off, we, we haven't drawn any cyclers just to, to cycle it. Hand, our hands just got too awkward this game, unfortunately. Really good start, uh, definitely a really good start, but we just kind of petered out here and drew too many uh, too many awkward ones. I don't know what they're doing. How do you win? You just Keep sliding through dust can kill them.
Like, they're getting two creatures back off of uh, the Drift here. They have Chill anyway. Maybe? No? Yes? What, they have an Angler? Let's do something, you know? Yes, I totally agree. Our mistake of having to slide the the supplier, it's going to come back and mill a chill 100% and we'll deserve every second of it. So, I don't know what is why we're taking so long, but... Morphochroma? Yeah, that card's not very good, unfortunately. But yeah, so you mentioned Exalting Angel early on. What's up, Curzon? Appreciate that. Appreciate you hanging out. Hello, opponent. Hardcast Narcomy, but might as well be a 10 10, honestly. All right, so yeah, they uh, they did not mail a chill, but we're just dead. So, how <laughs> we drew a land? All right, uh, yeah. So I mean, it's turn six. We missed two land drops. Just maybe it's one land drop, but um, yeah, a little clunky that game. A little clunky. Uh, definitely an upper limit to how many witnesses we want, things like that. But definitely an awkward game. Um, could play a little tighter as well. That's fine though. Now we're on the play, and um. The question is, do we want Blood Moon or not? That is the big question. Uh, if we cast Blood Moon on turn three, and it does make our mana pretty awkward. You know, we are... You know, Blood Moon is more in the in the sideboard for, like, Tron and stuff like that. Um, I think Chalice is very good, especially, especially on the play. Um, most of her deck costs one, you know, and it turns off Gravecrawler too, which is pretty cool, so... Um, Got our purges. I mean, I mean, they had cards in their hand. You know, like it. We would have been flooded with grave crawlers if it wasn't for Chalice. They had like three grave crawlers in their graveyard. Uh, definitely not cutting Chalice. Uh, Bayoth, Ragdust. Maybe the witnesses aren't very good. They're just kind of slow. It's not really a grindy matchup. Um, and Knight of Autumn's like. I mean, gaining life is kind of cool, but. The Rallier is also kind of medium. I don't know. Let's just try this. Let's bring in the Blood Moons, I guess. I guess it makes the Bailoffs awkward. I'm going to have two Forests in play. Yeah, I'm not going to bring him in, actually. I'm just not bringing him in. It just seems like it's it's too much. It's possible I shouldn't even be in the board at all, honestly. You know, they're they're really, really taxing. We only have five basics in our deck. We have a lot of fetch lands, but it seems really taxing. Might just be a, a card we don't want at all. See more Avalanche Riders, right? Keeper Mulligan, Avalanche Rider. What do you think, Zibby? Riveting. Riveting commentary. What's up, Net Decker? Let's go. Huh. This is a uh this is a hand of magic cards. <laughs> uh alright. I mean Loam, and somehow no fetch or cycle lands. Uh, drift and two wraiths, but like tempted to uh, cycle early for some sort of action, not necessarily leave it on the drift, but then we're like just paying a bunch of life without any real good effect. This is a really weird hand. We could like just naked loam on two, and then try and find some cycling lands. That's kind of slow, though. Uh, I don't know. What do you think, everyone? Keep mulligan with this hand. Uh, this is uh, this is a hand of magic cards. This is a hand of magic cards. So we go, like... Stomping ground, go. They go something. We go life from alone, naked. And say go. They go whatever. We go dredge loam, play drift. And have wraith up. 
Yeah, we are drawing to like a lot of pretty sweet guards too. All right, I guess we'll show some discipline. Sand is better. Better. Um, probably shipping. So we go turn one, like, get Stomping Ground. Get Temple Garden, actually. Get Temple Garden. Turn two, Renin Six. Get back the Heath. Turn three, Drift is pretty good. We're going to keep this. Um... I think we're going to uh, ship the Thrag Tusk, even though it's better than Bailoth. Bailoth's just online sooner, I think. Um, it actually blocks better, too, so let's ship the Thrag Tusk. Sounds pretty good. Alright. Uh, we could shock and cycle, but I don't even think I want to. Um, I want to get back to fetch land with the Ren 6. Keep making land drops, so I don't want to take damage. There he is. There he is. The Zipster. Zibby is celebrating St. Patrick's Day. He's got 12 ounces of Jameson whiskey in his water bottle. Go. Chug, Zibby, chug. He's got nowhere to be. He's social distancing. He ain't driving nowhere. You live your life, Zibby. All right, you live your life. Well, Pawn's not doing anything, so let's, uh, let's watch Zibby. Hydrate, dehydrate, don't drink and drive. Happy St. Patrick's Day. He looks drunk. Alright, here we go. Dark Slick Shores. Looking for a, a not great hand from our party. They kept seven, which is scary. This matchup feels really bad, honestly. We should have no graveyard hate in our deck, but it hasn't really played out too badly. I think that one of the things our deck does is definitely handle other creatures very well. So... Would appreciate it if our opponent like did something, you know. Hydrate, dehydrate, it's all the same thing, right? Right, Zibby? And back to bed. Zibby has been preparing for social distancing his entire life. All he does is eat, sleep, drink, sleep, eat, sleep. That's what he does. To be fair though, to be fair, he is going to work. All right, Nicole's not going to work. John's not going to school. But Zibby right now is in his office. He's at work. He's doing his job. Don't really know what his job is, but... All right, so here's Hedron Crab. Our opponent's made a play. Uh, we're going to get a Temple Garden. And we do cycle. I don't know. Yeah, I guess we'll cycle. We have good draws. Like, Chalice is a great draw. Wall of Omens is a great draw. We're going to cycle. Heh. Great. Take two for nothing. <laughs> draw the same card. Street Wraith. That's actually good. So we can um we can play the Bayout and flicker it immediately. If we need to. That's actually really good. All right, so let's plus this. Get back our Heath. Zibby's, Zibby's got to pull himself up from the bootstraps, yeah. And he sure does. Alright, so, feeling pretty good here. Turn two Ren 6 in the play is just pretty busted. Let's see what, uh, what they turn up here. They could have a pretty explosive turn here if they have, like, fetch line and into glimpse. So, let's see what they do. Zibby has boots. Yeah. He takes them off when it gets to work. While waiting for our opponent here, up oh, never mind. Works every time. That was like a crab. That'd be sick. Oh god. While waiting for our opponent here, I want to remind everyone to give me a follow on Twitter. That's right, the old Twitter sphere. Give me a follow. At Jim Davis MTG and uh, why? Well, you get to see about about me streaming. You know, post of a deck list. We're playing this deck later. It's a Pioneer Ashiok deck. Pi Pioneer Ashiok Oblivion Sower. Uh, my viewers love Oblivion Sower. They put them in every other Your Deck Live viewer submitted deck that I do. So figured I'd build a cool uh, Oblivion Sower deck. 
That deck is next on another freshly brewed. All right, so they have the nuts here. We got the two hedgehog crabs into a fetch land for a, a mill of six or uh, 12 cards. And they're going to crack the fetch land in response, which doesn't make any sense at all. Because if they hit blood gas, they can't get it back now. So not a good play. And uh, hopefully they hit all blood guests. We can laugh at them. Here they go. Here they go. Really, really slow. Hedron Crab. Say no, no, no. Red and six. All right. Glimpse, duress, glimpse. Brick. Glimpse, land, Narcomoeba. Mild hit. Not a good hit. Just a mild hit. Next one is Vengevine, supplier, land. Obviously, Vengevine's good, but... And then... Narcomoeba Angler. So if they have another one mana creature here, which is very likely, uh, they're probably going to crush us. Because they just have turn two Vengevine to kill my Ren and Six, which is brutal. Um, but. Took them six minutes to put Vengevine in play on turn two. Pretty, uh, pretty brutal. So, um, yeah, I mean, like I said, this is like a, like a very bad matchup for us. And uh, this is why. They just have six creatures in play on turn two and uh, killed our Ren and Six. Um, we can drift here, I guess. I mean, the Ren basically paid for itself. It just, like, cycled for a land and gained four life, which isn't the worst. Uh, I guess we're fetching for a forest and just casting drift and saying go. Now you get an F6 on our turn? Come on. <laughs> All right, so get a forest. Play the old Driftskis. Imagine if they have Nature's Claim. See, that'd be so sick. So there you go. They, they uh, dredge Dakmore Salvage and hit a Blood Guest. Fortunate. And they're going to Thought Seize us. Um, that's not cool. Maybe we'll take Bail Off. You know? I guess we're going to cycle the Wraith in response and just, like, cycle out this Vengevine. Just, like, take two instead of four. And hope I take the Bail Off. All right, we drew a line for Bail Off. Oh, damn it. All right. They have Fetch Land for Blood Guest and two Crabs. Man, they really have a, have a spicy one here. And they're doing it again. I don't understand. So, 12 cards milled, and any blood guests from the first two won't come back. They had Amalgam, Gracecrawler, oh my god, we're dead. They're going to have 100 power and play on turn three. All right, so I mean, obviously, as I said in the in the first game, it feels like we can't beat their good hands. Most decks can't beat their good hands without Graveyard 8. Um, they have bad hands, too, but this is clearly a very good one. And uh, we don't interact super well with creatures on turn one, so their crabs are kind of free reign to do what they want, so... We're crushed. It's fine. Um, definitely, uh, you know, for a deck with no one drops and no graveyard hate, we put up a pretty good fight this match. If it'll time out first, of course. You know, at this point, it feels possible. So they're putting in what? They're putting in like five amalgams or whatever. This is their turn three. Yeah. Uh, 12, so 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, we gain 4, we'll keep playing, I guess, I mean, we're just, like, super dead, but, I feel like, Vengevine in the bin, too, like, 
if they didn't hit our Ren and Six on turn two and kill it, uh, we probably were fine this game, honestly. We would have had the Ren and Six going these last few turns. Um, probably would have been all right, but... You have a claim? All right, whatever. All right, so tough first match there. Um, the good news is that the the proof of concept, like, the deck seemed to work. Um, you know, we... Uh, the street rate seemed very good. Ren 6 seems very good. Thrag Dust seems very good. So as far as, like, proof of concept goes, um, it did feel like the deck is working, which is good. Um, probably need some side of some graveyard hate in the sideboard, but there's a deck. If you're just tuning in, welcome to the stream. My name's Davis. This is Freshly Brewed. The sporadic show where I brew up a deck and you get to see me play it for the first time ever. So you get to watch the deck building process from the very, very beginning. This is a Naya Astral Slide deck. Astral Drift, Ren and Six, Life from Alone. You can see the deck on stream on screen right now. But also, we got sponsors. I got a shirt. That's right. Call us apparel. Awesome magic apparel company. Uh, made me a shirt. It's awesome. Looks cool. Join the pile drivers today. Um, not only have a shirt's awesome, really fun designs and awesome. They are really, really comfortable, really high-quality shirts. Super, super comfortable. And um, order yours today. Promo code GYM10, 10% 10 off your order. And if you're feeling really spicy, it's a little expensive. You can customize the shirt with your own name and your own number. Check it out. Excuse me. Uh, call us, Parallel Shop. Promo code GYM10, 10% 10 off your order. Get your Pile Driver shirt today. Check out their other great other line of great shirts as well. But yeah, flickering the thread does seems awesome. Um, I think the witnesses might be a little too much. Maybe like two witnesses is too many. Um, we'll see. Let's see what's going on here. Our cyborg need, needs work too. Uh, Blood Moon is feels more taxing than I thought it would be. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see. All right. So round two on the play, we have a drift and a wraith and a cast out. Uh, our lands are awkward, uh, to say the least, but not really that bad. Um, I think we're going to keep. We're going to keep. And then we can Mesa cycle cast out. I'm going to hold the Street Wraith, I think. I'm going to play Field of the Dead. I'm just play Field of the Dead and see what, see what they're playing. And then once we see what they're playing, we can decide, uh, decide if you want to cycle this aggressively or hold on to it and so on and so forth. Sup, Lee says, is it at all possible that one day in the future, as right now is not good, I get a bunch of people to get with that shirt together to play hockey? I mean, that would be cool with me. I don't know how he'd ever set that up, but that sounds cool to me. <laughs> if there's ever a hockey rank at an open, but want to play hockey, I'm, I'm down. I played basketball before. There's actually a tournament in Chicago. It was an SCG Open held in a sporting arena. We actually played on, like, on turf. It was cool. Uh, they go top-bottom on serum missions. And... There was a basketball court right next door, and me, Ross Merriam, Dan Jessa, Pat Sullivan played like a nutso. I think, I think Steve Urban was there too. I like a, just a two-on-two -two game for the ages. It was really, really fun. I love playing sports at uh, at events. All right, so Serum Missions Island makes me think that having to drift immediately is not as important. We're going to cycle this Wraith immediately. All right, let's do it again, I guess. Okay, stomping ground. So, certainly have interest in cycling Thicket, I guess. Um, although cycling the cast out is also reasonable. It's pretty similar though. I'll just play the uh, stomping ground on tap and take up. Not sure what they're up to over here with basic island serum mission, basic mountain, storm. Storm's probably a really bad matchup. I mean, we're just a, a, a non-interactive, you know... We interact with creatures, not spells, so... Storm seems like a heinously bad matchup. Um, and they are playing non-snow basics, which is pretty scary, so... I don't know why they would play the mountain before casting Seer Emissions, but sure. Alright, so Cycle Tranquil Thicket. Ooh. Now, if it is Storm... We want to play Chalice on two, not one. I guess Chalice on one turns off the cantrips. Chalice on two turns off their entire deck. So, that's interesting. Uh, 
we don't know they're playing Storm yet. Um, it's possible they're playing like a Phoenix deck or something else. They've gone top, bottom, top, bottom on both Serum Visions. What do we do? What do we do? Oh boy. Playing Drift just does not feel very useful, obviously. Night of Autumn also doesn't feel does not feel super useful. Um This is a tough one. This is a tough one. Chalice on one is very appealing. If we just play Drift, then we can't play Chalice on two, because so we, we, we have a tap land in the thicket. So it's like, if our plan is to play Chalice on two, we got to play Thicket now and just say go. Um, I mean, Knight, I would not consider a 4-3 creature for four mana, or three mana a clock. It's, it's okay. It's nothing they're going to struggle to beat at all. So I think it's Chalice on one. I think it's Chalice on one. We don't know they're playing Storm. And Chalice on one will still be very good against them if they are playing Storm. So... We're going to do it. Let's see what happens. Shivan Reef? That's probably a bad sign. Um, I guess with uh, Astral Drift, we could, like, slide out the creature in response to the first ritual. <laughs> Which is, like, not exactly the uh, most exciting thing in the world, but... Alright, they're just saying go. Um, actually, you can't, because we have only one white source. Life from a Loam. That's pretty good. Alright, let's just start Loaming, I guess. Also, Chalice on 2 is, like detrimental for our engines turns off loam and renin sick so skip basic planes uh and then we have a thicket and yes you know, it's fine so get back these two all right i mean we're doing stuff Alright, end step, here it comes. Alright, so they're gonna ritual into gifts and probably kill us. So they are playing Storm, unfortunately, but I mean I think that while it felt like they were like 70% playing Storm, uh the hedge is that Chalice on one is still good against them, and Chalice on two is actively good against us. And I don't hate our play. You know? This seems like, I mean, it seems like an atrocious matchup. I mean, we're all about dealing with the board, and they put nothing on the board, so. Just imagine we're probably dead here. Like, they have, they're getting gifts, ritual, ritual, brawl. Um, that's a weird, uh, means they probably already have passing flames, I guess. Uh, I give them, don't want to give them gifts and brawl. Just get the gifts again. I guess that's fine. Um, yeah, maybe we just bend the rituals. We can like slide Baral out like on their upkeep and stuff. I don't know, honestly. We're like pretty far from winning, which is also the big concern. We're like, we just don't really have a clock. 
Because the Nardak is really isn't designed. Is it actually gonna kill us now? Okay, sure. Whatever. I hope they screw up. Alright, well, um I guess I guess I'll cycle before we F six so I can go read some Shakespeare or something. Modern is certainly a hellscape at times. Uh, Alright, let's cycle cast out. And no dredge. And cycle thicket. And no dredge. And let's uh, read a book or something. Let's uh, find something cool to read. What are we going to read over here? Uh... The Metamorphosis by Franz Kafka. When Gregor Samza awoke from troubled dreams one morning, he found that he had been transformed in his bed into an enormous bug. He lay on his back, which was hard as armor, and when he lifted his head a little, he saw his belly, rounded, brown, partitioned by arc-like ridges, on top of which the blanket ready to slip off altogether, was just barely perched. His numerous legs, pithily thin in comparison to the rest of his girth, flickered helplessly before his eyes. What's happened to me? He thought. It was no dream. His room, a real room meant for human habitation, although a little too small, lay peacefully within its four familiar walls. Alright, are we dead yet? Uh, they can have these two. The worst part about Storm is you can't even F6. You know, they require your uh, they require your input. Above the table, on which an unpacked sampling of fabric swatches was sewn, Samsa was a traveling salesman. Uh, oops. Above the table, on which an unpacked sampling of fabric swatches was sewn, Samsa was a traveling salesman. Hung the picture he had recently cut out of an illustrated magazine which had depicted a pretty gilt frame. Which is, which is plate... I can't even read. Alright, whatever. We're dead. Um, yeah, passive lambs, yeah. Alright, so pretty fun. Just die on turn four. Whatever. Um, obviously, I would say uh, spell-based combo. Gotta be the worst possible match matchup for us in the format. We just don't interact in any way except for Chalice of the Void. So... Pretty lame. Uh, we'll see what we have in our sideboard for this. But Storm is obviously not a very popular deck. And whatever. What are you, you going to do, you know? All right. So what do we got here? What do we got? What can we do? Uh, we got Damping Sphere. That's a tight one. We've got... I mean, Mind Sensor does turn help turn off of uh, the Gibson Given. Um, which helps. Honestly, I don't mind Avalanche Riders. Just got to interact in, like, some way. Um, and then, like, the one Explosives can be for... Mopping up tokens. Let's cut Nahiri, cast out Wrath of God. Uh, Night of Autumn's pretty bad. Uh, the walls are also pretty bad. Um, Purge doesn't, doesn't do very much. Blood Moon, Night of Autumn. Uh, Winds of Abandon, also pretty bad. Maybe just leave the walls in, honestly. They just cycle. They're good, with, they're good with Drift, I guess. Um, so, not a ton to bring in, honestly. But, see if we can cheese them out with Chalice. Um, again, the problem with Chalice on 2 is that it really turns our engine off. So, ideally, we'd like to have a Ren and 6 already in play uh, to pull that one off. But, we shall see. You know, we can. Our goals are going to be to get a Mind Sensor in play or a Damping Sphere in play. And then, maybe get Riders in play and start flickering it and killing all of our lands. And then Chalice, of course. I think in the dark, we're casting Chalice on one. Um, Chalice on two is good against us, too. And they're going to have answers as well. So Chalice on one slows them down a bit. Doesn't totally... The thing is, in game one, Chalice on two might totally turn off their deck. Not in game two. They're going to have answers to Chalice. So this is like want Panharmonicon. I would say no. <laughs> we already have enough slow pieces, so... Do they have Aria Flame in the sideboard? Yeah, they do. Uh, maybe I should have left Knight of Ottoman. Maybe. 
Uh, all right. I mean, we have running six. We're going to keep. Not a great hand, but we can cycle. Do some stuff. All right, so let's get stomping ground. Cycle, tranquil like it, and then we'll uh, set up running six and just try and do stuff. Really, really just, just you know, on paper, just terrible matchup. What's up, K-Ponce? Hype for Naya Slide. If you like the deck, raise your hand in chat. If you like the deck, raise your hand in chat. All right, top bottom on the old uh, on the old Serum Visions there. You draw another Ren and Six. All right, and another Ren and Six. Wow. All right, well. We're about two Ren, Ren and Six too deep here. Um, I guess we're going to fetch again. I don't really want a mountain, though, and I can't get a plains. Eh, whatever. Just play Ren and Six. Get back to the get. Uh, definitely not the uh, draw steps we were looking for there. So, Serum Visions. As you can see, Chalice on two hurts us too. You know, just looking at the old board state here. Um, I just like win the game. You set up unbeatable board states with Thrag Tusk and Astral Slides and stuff like that. Eternal Witness, also not great, but could be okay uh, with dredging loam and doing stuff like that. Um, Let's just start with... Obviously, we have some redundancy here with the three copies of Red and Six, but also the uh, the extra life from Loam. Just don't really need Loam as much. We have Red and Six going, too. At least in the early games, we can't cycle that much. But let's start on... Uh, let's start on Cycle Tranquil Thicket. Renegade Rallier. It's a cool one. All right, I think we're just going to wall moments here. Let's get planes. Okay, let's wall moments. Draw a card. Looking for Chalice. No. Let's return a fetch land for our Renegade Rallier. We're going to want to get... We got Mountain. All right. I mean, our engine's working really well. But yeah, our, our engine is good against... Most things really bad against spell based combo, so Brawl. I just kill us on turn three, it'd be cool. I take it right now, just kill me. Just go ahead and kill me. Just do it. Alright, cool. Alright, back to the metamorphosis. Let's see what what uh what Gregor is up to. Gregor's gaze then turned towards the window. And the dismal weather. You could hear raindrops beating against the window gutter, making him quite melancholy. What if I went back to sleep for a while and forgot all this foolishness, he thought. But that was totally out of the question, because he was used to sleeping on his right side, and in his present state, he couldn't get himself into that position. No matter how energetically he threw himself onto his right side, each time he rocked back... I said F6, damn it! Each time he rocked back into a supine position... He must have tried a hundred times, closing his eyes to avoid seeing his squirming legs, not stopping until he began to feel a slight dull pain in his side that he had never felt before. My god, he thought. What a strenuous profession I've chosen, traveling day in and day out. The turmoil of business is much greater than the home office, and on top of that, I'm subjected to this torment of traveling, to the worries about train connections and bad meals and irregular hours, and intercourse with people that constantly changes, never lasts, never becomes cordial. The devil take it all! He felt a slight itch on his belly, slowly shoved himself on his back closer to the bedpost, so he could lift his head better, found the itchy place, which was covered with little white spots that he was unable to diagnose, and wanted to feel the area with one leg, but drew it back immediately, because when he touched, he was invaded by chills. 
All right. Uh, Blood Moon, Metamorphose, Ritual, Ritual. With nothing floating. I gotta keep playing Magic? Oh, man. All right. Um, so, I guess we're going to keep playing Magic. They've got five cards in end. They burn some Metamorphose. Um, Blood Moon is pretty good against us right now. Uh, we could get back the Heath and get a Forest. Um... If we just give them rituals, we just, like, don't really interact. You know, what are we even looking for here? We're hoping to, like, mise into a Chalice of the Void, I guess. Um, if I ever consider doing audiobooks, no. Um, and give them Blood Moon and kill Steam Vents. I'm sure they have ways to, uh, to fetch lands, obviously, so... Alright, I don't want to give him Metamorphos. That seems like the easiest one to not give them. So I feel like it's like... Maybe we just give him the Rituals, honestly. Giving them one Ritual, might as well be giving them two. We'll just put the, the Metamorphos and the Blood Moon in the graveyard. So they've got two Rituals and five other cards. And we got to keep playing Magic here. Which is not ideal, but... Alright, um... Let's return Heath. And try and draw something of relevance. I'm sorry, I mean, I mean, thicket. Sorry, thicket. And they could have passed. Actually, that, that makes sense. They could have passed in flames in hand too. We can't. I mean, we just can't do anything about it. So there's not much we can do, you know. Um. All right, cycle thicket. Another foothills. Yeah, I mean, we just, like, don't have anything. Um, that is very logical. That they have, they already have, they already have passed in hand. In which case, I probably should have given them the Manamorphos and the Blood Moon. So he might have screwed up, honestly. Um, but there's just, like, not a lot we can do, so. Just play Rallier, get back a fetch land. So they go. We'll be reading... Kafka soon enough once again, my friends. Yeah. You can see that our board state right now is fantastic. We have seven cards in hand, five lands in play, a Planeswalker, two creatures, an engine going, but... Again, we just don't really do anything against a, a storm deck. So, all right, we're just dead. All right, it's not a very fun match. Um, rough, rough start. Rough start. So far, it feels like the deck is working. Um, you know, we probably need to have better sideboard for graveyard decks and still and spell based combo decks. But uh, the engine, it feels like is is making progress. It's kind of working. So, what do y'all think so far? A uh, freshly brewed here. I know we're zero two, but. I don't feel bad about these games. You know, there's one of the important things about a brew and about building a deck and kind of just trying out new things is not necessarily the results of the games, more so how do they feel? Does it feel like the deck is working? Does it feel like that, you know, the, the engine is working? Are things jiving? Are the problems we're facing problems we can solve, problems we cannot solve? Um, and so far, I feel like the answer to those questions are it is feeling pretty good and the, the problems seem solvable. Uh, to an extent. So, remember, folks, I'm sponsored by the Hex Holder. That's right, the Hex Holder is all the way over there. Once you're allowed to go outside again, maybe, if we ever are, uh, the Hex Holder is a storage device for your magic cards. Holds four double sleep decks, holds your playmat, holds hand sanitizer, holds your hamster, holds your uh, pad pen. Check it out, thehexholder.com. It's light, it's easy, it's convenient, and um, get one today. Promo code Jim10, thehexholder.com. Also, check out bcwsupplies.com. Go get your sleeves, the Elite 2 Deck Guard sleeves. Best sleeves in the market, not close. Buy a five-pack of sleeves. They're less than $6 a pack with my promo code. Promo code JIM10. Check it out, bcwsupplies.com. Also, uh, great gear, uh, binders, deck boxes, and all that kind of stuff as well. And uh, we played against a Salt Eye, like, Vengevine deck in round one. And they, uh, they attacked our... Ren and six with Vengevine on turn two in game three. And uh, it was tough. It was tough. 
Quarantine in Italy. Stay safe, King Feed. Stay safe. So, 0-2, but not feeling too bad. 29 lands? 29 lands? Alright, so, uh, sure. I mean, this hand is fine. Definitely been unimpressed with Witness so far. We've, we've, played, we've played two very non-interactive matchups, so... Makes sense, but... I'm just gonna ship the Witness. So, unfortunately, I think we're playing this Tranquil Thicket on turn 1, which is not ideal, but... Uh-oh. Thoughtseize. Well, there goes our game plan. Uh, the good news is that we're playing it's an interactive matchup, though, so they're not going to kill us on turn three, so we can actually play some magic, which is pretty cool. Uh, Temple Garden. Uh, I guess we're going to get a red source. Let's we'll play the, the Heath. What's up, Love Tap? I think the view counts on Twitch should be higher. Twitch is bumping, you kidding me? Everyone and, they, everyone and their mother is streaming. It's insane out there. It's a crazy world. All right, so we'll get Sacred Foundry, and uh, kind of stink. It sucks the witness would be really good against them, unfortunately, but we dumped it. Um, so we're gonna get a Sacred Foundry tapped, and then we'll just resolve our Astral Drift and keep playing. You know, what's up, Dio? One of your team members showed up shirtless. Perfect. Ready for work. Love it. I'm still working. I'm at work right now. This is a live look in, fly on the wall look of me at work. Hi. No abrupt decay, please. Whew, thank God. Whew. All right. Thankfully, Lay Out of the Veil is like pretty bad against us. Uh, we're just a life from a lone right in six deck. Now we got to get there, of course, but. All right, so we're going to ship uh, the Knight of Autumn here. Discard Meyer, sure. So, want to draw Loam, or Ren and Six, or any cycling card that costs one. Or another Astral Drift. That one's not very exciting. All right, so all of our cycling lands are green and white. So let's cycle tap these. Draw. That's actually really good. Um, so, let's cycle this. And flicker our wall. And draw another land. Okay. And then we're going to play this... Tap. We're going to draw another card. Diothar says, I had to choose between a bottle of Gentleman Jack and my Tier 3 sub gym to get the sub. Wow. Diothar, that's... That's... That's some serious commitment, Diothar. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Gentleman Jack's pretty good. And alone. All right, we're off to the races here, folks. This is this is great. I think we're in great shape here. So sack a creature. Sure. We've got our loam set up. we got Thrag Tusk ready to go. We kicking. We have the Roman Ren 6. Whatever. So I'd love to draw a land here, I think. A fetch land in particular. But Alright, and they have a Tarmagizzle. Sure. Why is it called Slide? So Astral Drift is a homage to an older magic card called Astral Slide. Very similar thing. And Astral Slide was a very popular uh popular card back in the day. Alright, so we drew a thicket, which we're gonna cycle right now. And uh we're gonna slide their goy if it's not gonna do anything, but so we want to cast this Loam. It's a pretty good draw, honestly. To make a land drop and cycle on their turn, so... Our goal is to get a Thrag Tusk into the, into the onto play with a, a mana up to cycle it and make a million things and kill them, so... No, we're built to grind. This is definitely a... This is a super grindy deck, which is why Storm kind of kills us because they don't grind. They just kill you on turn three, you know? And we draw Ren and Six, too? Wow. Uh, we grinded, folks. We grinded. Uh, we're going to fetch, I guess, a Forest off the Heath. Yeah, I guess we have to. So 
Let's uh, loam back these two lengths. And let's uh, fetch snow covered forest, which couldn't be any smaller, obviously. And let's play Ran 6 and get back a land. Uh, we're cooking, folks. They plus Liliana will discard Astral Drift. Next turn, we get to go with Thrag Tusk with Slide Up. I guess they have this Charm I forgot about, so they're going to kill my Ran in 6. I think I'm going to screw it up. I shouldn't, I shouldn't have played that. I got, I got too excited. We drew Ran in 6. I got way too excited. That's my bad. It's okay, though. It's fine. Honestly, gain four life and get back a land is, is fine. So, all right. Discard our second copy of Astral Drift. Hope there's no, uh, hope there's no Decay or Assassin's Trophy in our future. Suck a little bit, but. Liana of the Last Hope. Sure. They're going to plus it. Sure. And return a Bloodstained Mire. Sure. So, are we going to dredge Loam? I think we are. Uh, because we're going to be... Our turn's laid out, but having the Loam in our hand and more lands in the graveyard... Which maybe we don't, actually. You just discard it. So we're going to go one, two, three. I think we do. Yeah, do I'm always down, you know? What the hell else am I doing? All right, let's go. Thrag Father Time. Uh, play that. And Thrag Daddy. And get this ball rolling. We got two cards in hand. We have Planeswalkers to fight here. And they have the Assassin's Trophy. That is pretty lame. All right. Um, that's pretty punishing. So we just we discarded our extra copy of, of Drift. That sucks. Well, I kind of got it all here. Um, I mean, we're going to cycle out our, our Thrag Tusk and make a 3-3, I guess. This is, we're, we're probably dead now. I mean, we still have Loam and stuff, but... All right, I'll cycle this. Where our Tusk is not going to come back till their turn, which honestly is, is fine. Um, make a 3-3. Three, three. Draw a card. That's a good draw. That's a really good draw. Jeez. Uh, okay. And then we'll get a, a land. Sure. That's a really good draw. All right. Maybe we're back in. Maybe we're back in, folks. It's just life Malone. Don't scavenge and use me. That's a big for though. Uh, so they get back a land with Ren 6, and they're saying go, Tusk comes back, and they're trying to defend their Planeswalkers with Tarmogoyf. So, draw for turn. We're going to dredge. Okay. And we are going to play Life from Alone. Targeting. Thicket. Thicket. Step. Draw three cards. Flicker Wisp. Nope. You want more than one field? The problem is that we already grind really well. So field is like good in our, our good matchups and bad in our bad matchups. Hence why we're only playing one. Um, is loam necessary? We'd be dead without loam this game. So. All right. So not going to, not going to dredge another step. Okay. Cycle. Not going to dredge. Draw street wraith. Okay. Uh, cycle again. And this time we're going to dredge. And we'll just cast the, uh, cast it again. So, that's pretty cool. So, loam back, field of ruin, thicket, thicket. Play Field of the Dead. And... Can ship for a turn. Uh, 
All right, you're up, opponent. The zombies are coming. The zombies are coming. Yes, Red Insects is certainly a more powerful card than uh, than Life from Loam is, but Loam much, much harder to stop. Man, that is a large Tarmogoyf. It is a 7-8. It's only missing Tribal, right? That's a beefcake. Target player sacks a creature. Um, all right. It's like a zombie. We're going to need to poke this uh, Liliana before it goes off. We're going to we're gonna make two two lands next, land drops next turn, though, so... What is this? Another Liliana the Veil? That's awkward. Um, so they're going to Edict again. We might actually want to go wide here and just sack the Thrag Tusk. We have two Drifts left in our deck. And while Flickering Thrag Tusk is nice, I actually want to Flicker the Goyf more, so... We, we need to kill the Last Hope before it ultimates. Same with the uh, the Ren and Six. We need to, to, to threaten their Planeswalkers here, so... Alright, so we're going to draw for turn. Alright, we're not going to dredge. We have uh, plenty of cards in hand. And the Hiri the Harbinger is here. Okay. Doesn't really help with our uh, our Planeswalker problem at the moment, but... We've got two cards in hand. So, instant source, we have a Retrace. Which is like... I guess not the end of the world. Alright, let's start uh, start by cycling. We'd like to find another Astral Drift or a uh, Eternal Witness. Sir. Hi! How's it going? It's going good? That's good. Alright, so we're going to Witness... I screwed up. I got back Field of Ruin thinking I wanted to get two zombies. I should have just gotten the fetch land. Because uh, I don't think I'm going to be able to activate this Field of Ruin in time. Um, mistake. I agree. Tribal being a card type is offensive. It, it, it bothers me too, Curzone. Alright, so let's play uh, Play Witness. We're going to get Astral Drift back. Yes. We have two cycles here. I guess three, right? Um, we can't make as many lands as I would like to, I mean, many, many drops as I would like to, so we, we screwed up here. But this, this field of should have been, should have been a fetch line. That's a mistake, which is fine. We're learning. And then we're uh, going to go this, this, this. Play the drift. Cycle the Street Wraith. Let's just start there. Maybe that's actually, I should have done the... Uh, Gonna land first, but I don't know, whatever. Get rid of that. Draw a card. Loam, sure. Let's attack the uh, Ice Planeswalkers here. Let's put a a significant shot at the Lily. We should probably attack Renesix twice, actually. In case they have a removal spell. We can definitely attack the Lily on the next turn. It's not ultimating, so that's fine. Uh, do that. And then... We just have, like, the world here, basically. We can we can flicker Eternal Witness. We can bounce our Tarmogoy. We can do whatever the hell we want. So, Goyf comes back. And nothing they have looks that effective, honestly. They go to try and kill the Witness. We just cycle it out. Yeah, so we're going to deal. So we'll cycle here. Flicker our Witness. Bolt targeting witness. Just do it again. So flicker witness. Let the stack resolve. That's actually really cool. So now we're not gonna have six. We have a street. We have a wraith. The wraiths have been really, really good. Uh, I've been very impressed with the wraiths so far. Each player discards a card. Um, sure. Discard Loam. Let's 
Try to land, sure. Shrink the zombie, sure. And then play... Not scavenger goose. Rain and six, sure. Oh, we drifting. We drifting. One to the zombie, sure. So they have zero cards in hand, and their Leon's about to die, and their whole house of cards here is about to, about to fall apart, so... Uh, yep, sure, whatever. Alright, so our witness comes back. We're gonna get back... What? Like... Does it even matter? Drag Dusk, maybe? I don't even know. We have five... Cycle... Sure. Alright, so... Untap. Dredge Loam. Cast Loam. Get back. Cycle Land. Cycle Land. Fetch Land. Uh, play fetch land. Crack fetch land. This game feels pretty over. I'm not sure why they're still playing. Unless they're just, like trying to rock the clock here. But uh, cycle step. Flicker this. And we're going to take out Ren 6 too. Wow. Close game, folks. Uh, all right, so we're going to poke uh, Last Hope. Last Hope. And maybe they enjoyed the deck and want to see it more? Hell yeah, I do. Deck's sweet. The Rag Tusk. Uh, you're up. <laughs> Your turn. Return Tarmogoyf, sure. It's a big Tarmogoyf. It is, it is a brolic Tarmogoyf. This Tarmogoyf works out. So if you're asking how a deck wins, this is how a deck wins. This is how a deck wins. They're just going to keep going. All right. What a trooper. Kill a zombie. Anyone's game. Anyone's game. Each player discards a card. Sure. I don't even... Whatever. Probably should just cycle the Street Wraith. It doesn't matter. Whatever. Uh, just, just make sure we don't time out here. Oh, we're in the end step? I should have second main cycled the... Uh, the thing. Whatever. Renegade Rallier. Party! Dredge Long. Alright. Ren and Six. Last Hope. Of the Veil. Vale. Them. Them. Oh, is it lethal? I just want to kill their Planeswalkers. Sure, it's probably lethal, whatever. Look, you're right, but... Those Planeswalkers were annoying me. You know? Your turn. Close game, though. Thought sees. Alright, sure. You get to see more. You get to see. The, my punishment is they get to see my Nahiri. That's my punishment. I started third just riding the clock here. Which is fine, I guess. That's their prerogative. Coming in. Party. Is it lethal? Is it? Yeah, I'm much sure. Those Planeswalkers were in play for a long time. I just wanted to make it known to my opponent that I knew that they knew that their Planeswalkers were in play for a really long time and they still lost. You know? It's important. I think it's important. Just flexing. 
All right, so obviously you're going to face a little more graveyard hate this game, so you got to keep an eye out for that. Uh, but what are we going to want here? Now, Chalice of the Void is like, honestly, only man against them. I think we're going to take out the Chalices. Uh, I think I would like, yeah, def obviously Bailout's coming out. That's a really good one. Uh, I like the Explosives a lot. I like the Avalanche Riders a lot, actually. Um, and the Celestial Purges. And maybe even Blast Zone. I think the Chalices are pretty bad. Uh, Wrath of God is a little meh. Our Wall of Omens are... The Wall of Omens are bad, but they do line up pretty well against Liliana. Um, I would say the Wrath is probably bad. The Cast Outs are like... This card is like pretty bad. I mean, this card shouldn't even be in the deck. Like, yeah, it cycles, but we're we're going to be working on our land engine to cycle. We're not really like... Like, the old Astral Slide decks in Standard had to play a critical mass of cyclers because you see to draw more of them, you know? Whereas we're playing Loam and Ren and Six, so we can just, we can just, you know, just keep getting them back. So, yeah, I won that one. With style. With style. Let's take the cast outside. I mean, obviously I can hit Planeswalkers and stuff, but, eh, whatever. And then, I would say that Goose Quarter is probably unnecessary against them. So, let's do this. Now, the fear, of course, is they have, like, Leyline of the Void, some sort of, like, major graveyard hate. But we have, we have these Night of Autumns to kill it, you know. Um, if they have Scavenging Ooze, we're a little soft to it, honestly. Uh, if they have, like, a Ley Line, we can kill it. Um, yeah, Cast Out's, like, you know, Gatherer Search, cycling cards. But actually playing with it, it just sucks. Like, you're just never going to... It might as well be... It's whatever's random creature, you know, that, that cycles... It's, it's like the hybrid creatures, right? That's like over like a green or a white. Might as well be that. You're never going to cast it, you know, so. That's pretty sweet, so. If you're interested in your welcome to the stream, my name is Jim Davis, and this is Freshly Brewed, the somewhat infrequent show that I do uh, where I just build the deck and play it for the first time on stream. So you're seeing the very first run of this, and uh, we are 0-2, some bad matchups so far. We lost to a Vengevine deck and a Storm deck. And uh, so we were 0-2, but the deck actually felt pretty good. Um, so, and now I've got a hand here. It looks like a standard hand, but we're going to keep. The deck is an Astral Drift deck uh, built around Cycling Lands and a late game engine of Astral Drift and Friends. And deck's been pretty sweet so far. It's also a pretty good draw. Um, we're going to fetch land and just say go. I don't think we're going to... We're not going to play a card for the Nahiri Ultimate if there's only one Nahiri, you know? Getting Thragged us with the Nahiri Ultimate's fine. Like, it's pretty good. Attacker 5, gain 5, make a 3-3, three, three, put it back in your hand. All right, they have Scavenging Ooze on turn 2, which is a pretty big tilt. Um, we don't really have many ways to kill the Scavenging Ooze, which sucks. But... Them's the breaks. Uh, still going to get Stomping Ground... And we can Ren and Six or Loam to just, like, get this land back right now. Double str Now, we could use Street Wraith to get our Loam back at instant speed, which is kind of cool, actually, because they don't really see that coming, necessarily. Um, and they might go for it only one green and get blown out. Um, we play Ren and Six, they just, like, attack it. It's kind of, kind of, eh. Um, mm, no, Barbarian Ring is not legal and standard. A modern, whatever. Mm, all right, I think we're just gonna play Life from Alone and try and get him. It also possibly throws him off curve, which is pretty sweet. So. We actually have two Street Wraiths, too, so. We have some Boom Booms, too. Like, I mean, realistically, just playing a, a Thrag Tusk straight up is not... <sighs> Alright, well, haters, um, okay... Aiden, message me on Discord about it. 
Let me, let me know more about it. So they're going to Ashiok, which is just gross. Uh, that's like our entire deck, basically. We can get back Loam, but it doesn't even do anything. So I don't even know if it's worth it. Uh, we can't even fetch either. This is, this is gross. Emrakul is definitely a possible thing, too. Promised End. I have wanted the Cyborg for a while, but... Alright, so... This is pretty gross that we can't even, like, fetch land. That's not the worst, I guess. Uh, uh yeah, I could have cycled up the Wraith in response so it actually exiles, because it might even be better to exile, but... Not being able to fetch is just awful, obviously. It just feels terrible. Uh, I guess we're going to be wingsing. I guess we're going to cycle and see what we draw. Did you do it on, on mobile? Ooh. Obviously, the old Wings of Abandon Avalanche Riders combo. It's not very good, but... We should, should draw lands, honestly. Lands we can actually play. Come on. <laughs> Why are you like this? Why am I hungry? I had lunch like an hour ago. I need some snacks. Uh, Alright. Yeah, this feels awful. Definitely think that having some sort of a non-graveyard based plan in the sideboard is, is very, uh, very relevant because graveyard is likely to come under attack here. Hmm. Is card a land? Got three cards in hand. We've exiled some more stuff. There goes a Celestial Purge. They have two Raging Ravines. Yeah, I think we're pretty dead this game. A Renegade a Rallier. I mean, not good for a multitude of reasons. Um, I guess we'll play Renin Six and shoot Ashiok. Oh, I'm so dumb. I screwed up. I just wasn't even thinking. <laughs> well, they'll be really surprised next turn. Uh, they'll be really surprised next turn. Oops. Really surprised next turn. I probably just discard something else, too. Even, even, even though I wasn't going to discard the Bailoff. All right, there's Raging Ravine, kill Ren 6, whatever. Cyborg plan, three more Nahiri and an Emrakul. The problem is that against Graveyard Hate, if you actually draw the Emrakul, you can't get it back into your deck, so. They just didn't plus the Liliana this time. But why? Okay. Uh, sure. I guess they like their cards. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Uh, if we play this, it gets edicted, which does not make them want to... Uh, wait. I mean, they did it last turn, you know? Like, they just know I was going to be an idiot the first time and not do it. Also playing Varaska, Golgari, Queen. I did it, did it this time. Is card a land? Sure. Man, they are really, really hating here. Just gonna say, you know. Maybe I should have scooped and not shown on Bailoth. Like we're not winning this game. And now they're gonna like play around Bailoth in later games. That might have been a mistake. So yeah, definitely think that some sort of plan 
that doesn't evolve in the graveyard, and that doesn't involve the graveyard, uh, is definitely on the docket for uh, as far as deck building goes. All right, and we have his bail off ready to rock, you know. So we get Avalanche Rider too. Uh, all right, let's um, let's attack Ashiok and see what happens. I think. Better attack the, the Liliana, because the Edict is pretty bad, too. And they're actually long. We actually get win this game, honestly. Let's just attack... Um, we're not going to Avalanche Riders. That's just bad, I think. Because um, we're not going to pay for it next turn. And just puts a creature in the graveyard also. So I'm pretty sure we just want to attack either Ashiok or Liliana. And I think it's Liliana. Okay. We'll get Ashiok later. All right, great. Face so jump block here. And now you get to play the other bail off. Obviously, like, it'd be cool to put it in for free, but I think we want to just, um... We could play Rallyer. We'll play some creature. That's just the goal. And they only have two cards in hand. And then, uh, try and leave us back on defense. We can kill Avalanche Riders. Uh... They're definitely going to eat it with Liliana, so we might as well just play the bail off. Then we can use the uh, the Rallyer once Ashiok is dead to get some value too, so. Uh, Rallyer does not get back Riders. That would be really, really cool, but it's mana cost two or less. Ravine currently doesn't matter. Uh, they can't use it defensively because we have our Avalanche Riders, and if they attack with it offensively, it doesn't mean anything, so. All right, so Ashiok's gone. We can now fetch, which is pretty cool. So they're going to exile. I'll save another one, which they probably do. So why would, why would they do that? So annoying. All right. Um, they have one card left. And they're going to hit it again. And a Tarmogoyf, which is only a 3-4, which is a pretty big game, actually. Creature, Planeswalker, land. Very interesting Tarmogoyf there. I could have fetched a response. I'm playing like crap, folks. I'm sorry. I'm just, there's so much stuff going on. I'm, like, I'm like not like focusing on the game. I should have fetched a response to the Ashiok, obviously. I'm just an idiot. Because um, casting direct us there is awesome. Blech. All right. Um, Let's see here. Let's figure this out. Oh man, yeah, that was that's so bad. <laughs> Alright. Let's attack Liliana. They're probably gonna block, honestly. They have no cards in hand. So they block. And now now we avalanche right out of the raging ravine. Because now they now we, now we now we can't get edicted. Obviously it has haste, but it wasn't it wasn't going to attack prior. I want their wave to die, so um, so this is fine. Now we have edict protection, and I think we're like pretty ahead here, honestly. Not pretty ahead, but like decently ahead. They play a land, sure. They're gonna fetch. Mill four again. Sack creature, awesome. Okay. So now we're free to attack a Planeswalker and maybe get this, uh, get our stuff online here. That's also pretty good. Um, now I want to attack the Ashiok and we'll see if they block with the Ravine or not. Sure. Um, so we're going to lose a card from our hand. I should probably just cast the Rallier and 
I guess dump loam? That sucks, but... They just have actual nothing right now. They have a Liana and a, an Ashiok and nothing. So, play Rallier, and I can just attack and kill their stuff next turn. They don't draw something really good. Um, and then we'll say go, and we're probably going to discard the Loam, I think. Yeah, Salt Eye Double Dips tomorrow on YouTube. They draw Ren and Sick, so pretty sick draw. Um, because they have a peat land in their graveyard, which is sick, but sure. Still get to kill multiple planeswalkers this turn, and hopefully cast the Rack Dusk. If they like get back peat land, crack it, and draw Tarmogoyf, I'm gonna be pretty mad, but. So untap, that's not bad. Um, let's attack. I don't think Ashiok matters much drawing the drift. I guess I could like, I can fetch. I should get rid of the Liliana for sure, because that can uh, that can obviously uh, eat me. And then Bailoff kills. I guess it kills Ren Six. Yeah, let's kill Ren Six. So yeah, bang bang, and then we'll just play play drift. Have have step up. We are getting lower on cards, but we're not going to deck. So famous last words, right? Clock's low too. All right, fetch land, sure. Sure. They're gonna mill themself and hit Croxa. <sighs> Despite them running really hot, I think we're still gonna win this game pretty easily. So, although obviously flickering a Cro oh, that's insane. So we slide Croxa and it just it just dies. That's awesome. Um, so we are gonna take a second trigger and take some damage, but that's fine. Uh, there's no way to get play on the trigger, right? So it's fine. All right, cycle. Sure. So discard foothills. Take, take. Why do you gotta confirm a card? Just discard it, you know. They can obviously cast Crocs at every turn, which is annoying, but... Alright, untap, draw, forest, not cool. Attack them. Attack this. Alright, so we're finally free of all the prison elements. Um, now the problem is that we need to draw like an actual thing to do, because they have a 6-6, six -six and we need to beat that, so... So, Loam, Renin 6, uh, Any Cycler, a lot of draws, perfect. And we just slide this bad boy out. I think we're way ahead right now. <laughs> we're drawing to over half our deck. Cycle that, draw. Yeah, okay, sure. Uh, play Nahiri, plus... Lol. Why not wait till their end step to blink it so I can play from my hand before discarding again? Yeah, you're right. I think I'm hungry, folks. I played this game pretty badly. Still gonna win. I I know I'm hungry, but we're currently watching a Snickers commercial. That's what I'm saying. So 
So they're at four. We get two looks off of our Nahiri. Uh, we're drawing to a million things here. A cycler, most spells. Okay. Works for me. Uh, it is pretty cool that the Drift is actually a cycler too. Same match. Yeah, I need, I need a snacky toots. I don't really know. I just got, I got like really, really hungry. Hungry like I just like played three hours of sports or worked out. And I have not done that at all. Just do it. What's going on? Is scooping? Scoop leg? It's really weird. I had lasagna for lunch like an hour and a half ago. I just got really hungry. I don't know. All right, one and two. That game, now that game and that match, I played like crap that game, and they played like seven hate cards, and we still won the game. So that is appealing. What's up, bud? You don't play like you when you're hungry. Pizza goldfish. What a delivery. What a delivery. Thanks, bud. High five. Man. Just, just I, that smiles back. Goldfish. Have Pizza, 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 pizza. I guess having John and Nicole home isn't that bad. It isn't that bad. It really isn't. Yeah, seriously. Also, I would have been home because it's 442. It's true. You would have been home by now. Very true. Very true. All right. I got some snacks to smile back here. Thanks to John. Appreciate that. And I'm going to have a little snacky here. And uh, get, uh, get back in the game here. All right? Yeah, I know. Pizza Goldfish are tight. Keeper Mulligan. Pizza Goldfish. Hobbs. Reset. Welcome back. Three months. All mulligans get banned. Alright, so... We're on the draw with Triple Chalice. Witness and nothing, basically. Um, I think on the play I might keep this, just hoping that the, the Chalices are good on the play. But we're going to mulligan this end. Sure. Keep... Ship the basic. Yeah, I think that uh, cast that's terrible. All right, what do you got for me, opponent? Opponent keeps seven. Scalding tarn. Breeding pool. Okay. The old goose, eh? All right. Interesting. Some sort of Urza deck, maybe? A thicket. Now, the question is, do we play one of these cycling lands as an actual land? I think the answer is yes. Um, do we have another one? So, yeah, let's just do that. Probably all wall blossoms on turn two. Powerful magic card. Powerful magic card. Pizza goldfish sucks. Sunset, you're in big trouble. So, pretty good hand from our opponent. Pretty good hand. Uh, turn to Emery and Goose. We draw Ren and Six, which is also good. Uh, but they have their Bobble Emery chain going. And we don't really... Uh, don't really deal with Emery very well, honestly. So, we are going to Ren and Six, just fine. And... Definitely... Uh, I mean, Chalice would be nice here. Even Chalice on zero to stop the, the bobbles is not bad. Um, let me fetch a duel here, I think. Probably get Sacred Foundry. I don't think damage is going to matter too much. Well, let's get our random six going. Why isn't Rule of Law normally considered our lock piece option? What do you want to use it for? K 
Can you unmute so we can hear you chew? Maybe. All right, so they could cast Urza this turn. I guess turn three Urza on the play would be pretty good. <clears throat> There's your Bobble. There's your Astrolabe. All right, so no Urza. That's good. Probably need to hold on to this cast out for Urza, honestly. Urza's just so good. One of the cards we lose by uh, not playing the Bant version of his deck that I played a couple, a couple months ago is Supreme Verdict. Uh, Verdict's pretty good. I should we get these against these Urza decks. Verdict's actually really against these Urza decks. So, I mean, our engine's online. Um, we just, like, need to do something that affects this board. We just don't answer Emery at all. Um... Which is kind of a problem. Like, what do we do against Emery? We don't really have a way to kill it. Where's Lightning Rift? My kingdom for a Lightning Rift, you know? All right, let's cycle step here. Touche. And I guess we're just gonna play Wall Blossoms and she had a land back and say, yeah, let's get a planes, I guess. Just slide it over and over again and deck them. Love it. Mage. Thanks to sub. Appreciate that. Uh, so we're going to planes here, like I said, right? Planes. Uh, play wall of... I guess we'll plus this first. Get back step. Like, the end is rolling. You know, we're we're definitely leaving the station here. We are, uh... We're drawing cards and doing stuff, but... Oh, God. Not the Wall Blossoms. Wall Blossoms has a family. It's got a family. No. Don't do it. Please. Really not good for comedic timing when they just don't do anything. It is funny that, that I, uh... Sliding the Emery a bunch of times to kill them is actually probably a reason one condition, honestly. Alright, so we draw another secluded step. Okay, we are cranking here. They're gonna make food. Alright. I guess we don't really have a card to abuse the uh to abuse the ultimate on Ren and Six with. But we can't play Lightning Bolt because we're playing uh Maybe playing like a Helix or two would be fine. Helix plays well with uh with uh like Eternal Witness and stuff. Um it's like a card to have for Ren and Six. It can like poke a planeswalker. Alright, so they're putting Cryptic Command on top of their deck. And they're gonna draw it with their Mistress Bobble. So now we're fighting Cryptic Command every turn. Fun. Alright. Yeah, I do miss Lightning Rift. Lightning Rift would be nice. Uh, Field of Ruin. That is interesting. Um, we can try and cast out their Emery, honestly. I don't know when we would do that and play around Cryptic. It's going to untap, probably. Cast out for Helix. That could be a thing. That could be a thing. Helix obviously helps stay alive against the aggro decks, too. Um, we just have so many cards here. So we play land to seven, play cast out. I mean, they're going to like cryptic. I mean, letting them cryptic just sucks, honestly. Uh, so I don't really like the idea of that. Um, we could just do it on their turn, I suppose. does not feel particularly awesome. Let's get forest. I just planes, actually, because we have all these things in play. I'm just plus to return one of these. I guess we'll discard Field of Ruin. Um... 
We just get it back, so maybe we ever lose it. We just guard the Mesa, I guess. Which I'm sorry, we're gonna yeah, we're gonna run then we're gonna upkeep, try and cast out their emery. Yeah. Yeah, I like the idea of lightning hooks over cast. That cast out blows. Cast out's really bad. Only cards that convert lands into damage. Well, now I can just do it now, I guess. Alright, sure. Slide refers to the card Astral Slide, which is what Astral Drift is a homage to. Type in Magic the Gathering Astral Slide, and a million decks will come up. Metallic Rebuke? That's gross. Yeah, like, the thing is, Molten Vortex, uh, Seismic Assaults are just, like, really, really mana-intensive cards that don't, you know, don't really cast those cards super well. Um, yeah, that's true. Seems good against Prowess and Burn. I mean, honestly, against Prowess and Burn, we have, like, Drag Tusks and Knight of Autumns and stuff, Chalice of the Void, so... Hell yeah. On Raise your hand, chat, if you remember when Onslaught was in standard. Out yourself as being old like me. I mean, they just like have Cryptic in their hand, so like I don't really know what we're supposed to do. Um, just like grind, I guess. I wouldn't mind some other way to play lands, like play more lands. Um, like Exploration Effect of some kind. Thanks for follow for, uh, Frag. Appreciate that. If you haven't followed him with that follow button, of course, watching on YouTube, make sure you follow on there. Yeah, we just like don't have a way to abuse the ultimate at all, which is not not good. That's definitely a, a deck building uh, error. So it's good we're noticing these things. We're good we're noticing these things. Jazzy, you're a sub now. What's anyway from? Welcome, my friend. Um, what are we like drawing to? Like, the card Cryptic Command just, like, seems good against us, just, like, in general. Just like, oh, I guess. I should put Field, but... Alright, so I'm gonna bounce my right in six and draw a card. Lame. We're going to discard probably like Forest Step, I guess. We field. Gem Bomb Polluter, Unholy Grotto. Hell yeah. My first serious tournament uh, was New York States, 2004 or 5, and I played Zombies. It was a black red zombie deck. I wanted to beat Karma, so I splashed red and I played Four Shrapnel Blast in my deck. My signature play was turn one Swamp Mox. Chrome Mox Imprint, Chrome Mox Imprint, Arena Go. Those are the days. Alright, so and we're just getting like clowned. Uh with Emery here. They've just drawn two cards a turn every turn for the entire game. Flame jab. Euro. Alright, I guess. Trying to get this uh this this drift in play somehow. I don't know if we're gonna do that, but from Dublin, you play Protoss? Play some Zerg. Follow for years. Thanks so much, Jazzy. Appreciate that. Alright, so... Yeah, I mean, it's pretty good. And a goose. You have a little counter Renin 6? Like, resolving Slide is the big is the big prize here. That's what we really want to do. Graveborn Muse, yes. Shepherd of Rotten, no. Uh, Rotlong Reanimator. That's not bad, actually. Uh, we're going to keep this in play for Rallier. It's, 
kind of a rally your shear to put extra lands in play. It'd also be useful otherwise. Uh, we're going to open our Ren Stick and see what they do. I would love them to counter Ren 6. Ren 6 feels almost irrelevant. Street Wraith. That's actually not bad either. Alright, so Ren 6. Cryptic me. Do it. No. Alright. Um, get back secluded stuff. Play forest, crack fetch for temple garden, I guess. Whatever. Shock. Play renegade rail here. Just trying to gain a little, little mana advantage here. You can use our spells better. Like, we know they have Cryptic at end. Rebuke, sure, it's fine. Right, you're up, I guess, whatever. Fendorso says, when I gift a sub, do I get paid the same? Yes, it's the exact same thing. Gifting a sub is the functional equivalent to someone just subbing themselves. We should some way to resolve this drift. It may actually be fine. It's like they're not a combo deck, you know. What are you doing, opponent? What are you up to over there? Doing stuff. Oh, casting Euro? Sure. Yeah, I mean, they've had basically like the optimal hand this game. Um, and it seems like we're a little soft to counterspell. Oh, I want to boil on the board. That was the card. I forgot. No, I told you. I told you. If you've been watching from the very, very beginning, I sat down to do the deck tech for the deck. And I said, there was a card I wanted to add to the sideboard. I thought of it while I was eating lunch. I built this deck in the morning, and I forgot what it was. And it was Boil. And I said I was going to remember it like during match like three or four. God. Unbelievable. My kingdom for a Boil. Oh, man, that makes me so sad. You know how happy I'd be boiling someone? Oh. Jim D. Salt in chat. You blew it in chat. Oh, man. That's, I mean, we're brewing decks, you know? I just, I just brewed the deck. You're never going to get it right the first try, you know? They're just going nuts over here. Oh, you blew it. You blew it. Boil. Boil was the card I wanted. Galvanic Blast, my Ren and Six, whatever. Oh, man. Pile it on. I'm so... Um, I'm, I'm, I'm dumb. Second, second Astral Rift. Boil. Boil, boil, boil. Oh, man, I blew it. Blew it, blew it, blew it. Is Boil better than Choke? Yeah, I think so. Oh, man. Look at their mana base right now. Boil. Give me Boil or give me Death. Let me draw my card, damn it. You're winning. Alright, um... 
So they have Cryptic Command, and they have 5 mana, 6 mana. I don't really know how we're getting out of this one. I'm just pretty sure this, uh, this Drift is not going to... I'm going to cast a Drift. It's just not going to resolve, but whatever. It should be fairly obvious that we're doing at this point. So, pretty optimal hand from our opponent. I'd say we're a little soft to counter spells. Um, it's kind of a concern. Um, we're also soft to Emery and like creatures like that. So, all the geese too, you're right. Alright, I'm just going to go next game. Alright, um, man, boil, 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 alright, so, um, yeah, this is good, this is good, this has been a good, a good process so far, um, the whole point of this show, being freshly brewed, is to, uh, to just brew a deck and see how it goes, and then kind of flesh it out, and then learn, and we're definitely learning here, we're definitely learning, we're missing a few key pieces, I think, and, um, a few of our cards aren't great, could be better for sure, so, all right. Um, yeah, we definitely lack an answer to Emery. We're definitely very, very soft to Emery. Um, I think these Wall Blossoms can go. I don't really want those. Night of Autumn's good. I can mess Night of Autumn. Explosives. I guess explosives is fine. Don't want to bail off. Don't want Riders, don't want Sensor, don't want Blood Moon, don't want Purge, Sphere, or Blast Zone. So I guess Blast Zone's better than, um, than Ghost Quarter. I'm bringing Explosives. Uh, Chalice. Chalice is weird. They don't have many ones, and then they don't have many zeros either, but. Not sure. Not sure. Nahiri is just like an extra top end threat. Um, it works well with the, uh, with the Ren and Six Life Maloms. You can discard the lands and draw real cards. It's like a pseudo removal spell, pseudo threat, pseudo engine kind of card. It's like an extra little top end card, you know? It's very possible that we could have a sideboard plan that involves bringing in more Nahiris and like an Emrakul, like a plan B. Doesn't use the graveyard, but yeah, they're, uh, they're, um, they're not playing Wur. They're just, they're just a value deck. They're not a combo deck. They're just like a, a control deck, just utilizing the fact that Earth is really stupid. Um... Let's try this. It also feels like we are we struggle a little bit to like get the lands onto the battlefield. Well, that, might, that might just be a symptom of the fact they had an insanely good hand on the play and went turn one, Goose, turn two, Emery on the play and had, had a million permanents on turn two. So it might have felt like we were more behind than we actually were, like turn-wise, but... The Worm or Trace card, that card's not very good. We, need, we want a plan that doesn't use the graveyard, because a lot of our deck does. So I think having some sort of a... You know, Plan B is definitely an important factor. Uh, I actually love Wrath of God in a, in a matchup like this. I almost want another one. Uh, this hand's great, though. Put him all against a 6. Love it. I like our Knight of Autumns, too. It's like anti-graveyard uh, anti hate. They're just like pretty playable anyway. So, alright, let's get a... Uh, get Stomping Ground and Cycle. They mulligan 2-6. I mean, playing Soul Herder would be a totally different deck, so. Alright, Arkham's Astrolabe. Um, let's get Stomping Ground and Shock. I think I think the uh, Astral Drift wants to be in a deck that's pretty cool, I guess. Astral Drift wants to be in a deck that um that uh is not playing many creatures, I think. More of a control deck. Alright, so I'm gonna go look at their deck list because I wanna know more about their deck before I decide if it's Chalice or not. I don't think Chalice on one is very good against them. So let's look at the uh, the stock deck list for their deck, just like teamer Urza. Demir Urza, this deck. So they've got uh, not many ones. It's just 10 ones. They have. Actually, they have, they have Blast, too. Hmm. Cyborg wise. Tormod's Crypt. Chalice on Zero is not bad, honestly. Turning off Bobble. 
Turning off Bobble makes Emery much, much... Emery's like almost not even good without Bobble. Um, so I almost don't mind Chalice on zero, realistically. I think we're just going to run in six, and then uh, get back Thicket and Chalice on zero. Also love that we have this uh, Wrath of God in our hand. Wrath is really good against them. It's a great answer to Urza. Is this right? I am not sure, but... Turns out possible Tormod scripts as well. Engine Online. Shock off Breeding Pool. Explosives on two. Okay. I mean, getting two cards off of Ren 6 feels awesome. You know, we already got one card off of it. We're about to get another, which is great. Uh, hey, 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 hey. uh, let's cycle whatever this one. Cycle thicket. Uh, get back thicket, and I think tap land go is fine. It's worth fifteen, you know. It's it's a thing. You could just play. You get a forest, I guess, too. Makes the loan better if we draw it. Yeah, I suppose play the heath and say go. So, they're, like, priced into popping explosives now, so they have a much slower... So, we're obviously, in the first game, they were just, like, bird into Emery on the play with, an, with, a, with a, a bobble, and they were just going nuts. This game, with their hand is much, much slower. Um, yeah, miss a land drop. Gotta pop the explosives. All feels awesome. Fetch a forest cycle. Drift. Love it. This is much better for us. Oh, now we're doing it. They're going to upkeep, pop the thingy. Draw step, whatever. It's before I can use it. That's great. We resolve Astral Drift. That's dope. We tap our lands properly. God, auto tapper, where art thou? And uh, let's play Foundry and just say go. And feel pretty good about things. The Honker, sure. Sucks that Ransix can't kill the Honker. Oh, God, Wrath of God, give it to me. Astrolabe, Cryptic, you love to see it. Wrath of God all day. Boom, shakalaka. They obviously missed a million land drops too, which doesn't really doesn't hurt, but explosives, sure. Uh just play Ren and Six here, I guess. Probably shouldn't be able to counter it. Could have like rebuke. Could have like Aether Gust, I guess, but they're just gonna scoop. Alright, so they missed some land drops there, but their hand was so good game one. You know it evens out. You know it evens out a little bit. Um Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Alright. Mm, Street Wraith. Once we get Drift in play, can they remove a Drift? They've got, uh... Let's have Explosives. Not really. Getting Drift in play is huge. Remember, they're not a combo deck. They're gonna, like... I guess they get ex Explosives, sure. They're not a combo deck. They're, uh... They're definitely a... Just kind of value deck, and being able to bounce stuff is pretty cool. All right, run it back. Run it back. Two somewhat lopsided games there. Yeah, my kingdom for Boyle, though. Boyle, Boyle, Boyle. Yes, we are one and two. As I said earlier, though, we lost to the Salt Eye Vengevine deck. It does not seem like a very good matchup. We have no graveyard hate. We almost won anyway. Uh, took a really good hand out of them in game three to win. We lost to Storm, which feels unwinnable. So... The matches have felt good. The deck has felt pretty good. God damn it. Um, and this is the first run. This is the, uh, you know, this is off the drawing board. So we're going to see if we can uh, fix some of our issues here. Oh, we're going to mulligan this. It's not a very good end. All right. I guess we'll keep. 
ship the wings of abandon. This is not not really wanting. We're gonna have to want to draw a, a fetch land in our first two draws. What's the next goal? Basically, we're just a value deck. I mean, we're abusing astral drifts and cycling lands and the cycling engine to draw a lot of cards, control the board, and we kill them with Thrag Tusk or whatever. You can flicker Thrag Tusk, things like that. Um, and Nahiri is sort of like a, an all-in-one top-end threat slash engine slash removal spell. Alright, so they have Bobble and Goose. They have a, definitely have a good hand here. Uh, Ski! What's up, my friend? New sub, what's your name? Where are you from? Welcome. Happy to have you. And this kind of sucks. So now we're going to play the step so we can cycle a step. We have like 29 lands in our deck because we don't plan on playing these as lands, obviously, but not cool. Goose number two. Okay. Would love to see a, a land light hand here so our wrath is good, but we'll see. All right, so we drew Sacred Foundry, which obviously makes our our thicket necessary too. All right, let's play thickets. They go. I guess we could like just main phase cycled. If we drew a fetch land, maybe play fetch land over thicket, but we'll see. We'll see. If they have, like, Urza into Counterspell, we're probably just dead. Which they seem to have, so... Alright. Yeah, that's pretty good. Unfortunately, they are a turn ahead of our Wrath. They get to untap before we Wrath, so... Oh my god. Alright. I mean... If they don't have a Counterspell, we're gonna Wrath them into the Stone Age. Which is cool, but... Renegade Rally or Fetch Land, please. Chalice of the Void. Uh, that's actually fine. Turns off Bobble, so... Uh, problem here being we need to draw lands. Uh, we want to cast Wrath next turn. Um, I think we're going to Loam and play Secluded Step tapped, and it feels really bad, but I think that's what we're going to do. Uh, we could also like just play Drift this turn. and play. Ch we're playing Chalice on zero for sure, but I think Resolving Wrath next turn is just like the most important thing. And there's a chance they don't have a Counterspell. You know, not a good chance, but a chance, I suppose. And I mean, this is a pretty insane hand for them on the play, so... We're just going to Loam. Get the Dredge Loam too, which is cool, I guess, so... Obviously, going tap land, tap land, tap land is not our plan A or B or C, but. Say a prayer, everyone. Astrolabe, sure. I mean, no counter spells in the graveyard. Two cards in hand. We should have mulliganed. We already, we already mulliganed, didn't we? It's a six card hand, right? Yeah. So, don't think that going to five is reasonable. Attack with Emery, attack with Urza. All right, everyone. I need some energy right now. I need to see some serious hype in chat for trying to resolve this Wrath of God. Um... I'm not going to dredge. I can dredge next turn. End of autumn. Need some energy, folks. We do have witness. So we could, like, theoretically get it back. Penguin, resub, 18 months. I can't look. No! 
I wasn't making a second food. No. Just have it all. All right, whatever. So they have Cryptic and then Tarn back the Cryptic to the top of their deck. Whatever. Go away. All right, fine. All right, it's a pretty good hand from our opponent there. We do seem a little soft to uh, two decks like this, both based on not being able to kill Emery and then not having Boil on our sideboard. So, pretty sick. I mean, that was a pretty sick hand. I mean, they had turn three Urza with Cryptic back up and Emery. So, like, what are you going to do? All right, so we're, we're one and three. But, again, it doesn't feel like a bad one and three. Um, the engine feels pretty good. Um, there's certainly kinks need to be worked out. But um, on the whole, the deck seems sweet. Hates control. I do, do deck techs for $10. I can't do free deck techs. Then I would do nothing but deck techs the entire stream. So, love to take a look at it. $10 for a deck tech. Appreciate it. Oh, man. This last round is brought to you by Cardboard Live. Cardboard Live. You see the deck on the overlay right now. It's Cardboard Live. And again, this show is freshly brewed. The show where I build a deck and just play it on stream. So my first match of this deck was game one, match one of this league. Um, the shirt giveaway is announced on my Twitter. You can see who won on the Twitter. Um, but yeah, so... Definitely need uh, to tune some cards up here. Cast out feels bad. Helix seems good. Uh, some graveyard hate in the board. Uh, probably want some boils. Punish those filthy blue players. Um, let's see what we can do here. Come on. Come on. Uh, sure. This is fine, I guess. Keep the ship an extraneous chalice. We're on the play, so I mean, if we have Chalice in the play here, and it's like, lands, it's fine. Spire Bluff Canal? Typically, Chalice of the Void is good against Spire Bluff Canal decks, so... Sweet. I'm just gonna crank this right now. Get ourselves Sacred Foundry. Chalice on one. Spell Snare? No? Okay. Interesting. F6. Interesting. What are they doing over there? Just guy something? I mean, I definitely really want this Ran 6 to resolve. Um, Suns is way too hard to cast. We were just lightly splashing red. So... What are they playing? Spiral of Canal, Flooded Strand. I kind of want to just play Knight of Autumn. Um, without access to Bolt or Path, it's actually like a reasonable threat that can kill them. I don't want to play whatever we play to get countered here, and I kind of want more information on what they're playing. So let's just cast Knight of Autumn. Let's see what they do. If they counter it, I couldn't care less. And if it resolves, I think it's just like fine. So... Flood Strand for Steam Vents, and so probably just a blue red deck. And again, Chalice on one is typically very good. It's just straight blue red decks. So their bolts are probably off. Uh, Street Wraith. Attack. And now the question is what's more important, Drift or Ren and Six? I'm pretty sure Ren and Six is. So we're just going to try and play this, uh, this, this Drift here. It's going to resolve too, huh? Uh, all right. Let's just say go, I guess. We would like to make a land drop, but this is fine. We have Wraith for uh, protection for the night. Um, oh, man. Storm again? Are you kidding me? <laughs> Who plays Storm? Like... I haven't seen Storm of Modern in, like, months. Like, maybe, like, once in the last, like, two months. <coughs> I'm okay. Um, I mean, we're super dead, obviously. We just, we just can't win. Um, yeah, I mean... 
one of the again, and this is what I was saying. They do all right. That is to be, to be fair. Kobe's correct. Their name is literally Storm Guy is me. So we'll give him that. I guess we'll give him that. Um, sorry, Ghost Wright is is correct. What's up, Kobe? Um, so yeah. Um, definitely, definitely not cool. But there's a. You know, you're playing modern. Your matchups are going to swing things pretty wildly one way or another. So we'll see what happens here. I mean, they cast their... Uh, they've got a... What do they have in hand? Some stuff. They, they splash they splash Veil of Summer on their sideboard. All right. Let's... um Cycle... Thicket, I guess. Rob's not going to use the Knight of Autumn, but... Uh, we're 1-3, but again, I think it's a pretty soft 1-3. It's the first first draft of a deck. It's working pretty well. Our matchups have not been good. Uh, Alright. I guess we can't... Uh, can't get back a Cycling Land... Remand, red and six. Sure. Doesn't really matter. It's sort of like, will this knight kill them before uh, before we die? And their hand is insane, so. Alright, so they're going to play Manamorphos. Okay, sure. Slide of hand. Eh. Ritual. Are they going to empty? Ritual. All right. I mean, that should be enough for passive flames. So, yeah, it's, you do your thing. Yep. So we can gain four or flicker a creature at instant speed with our Street Wraith. I just gained two. Someone casts a zero mana spell and you blink Chalice. Does Chalice counter a spell? No. Uh, because uh, it has to trigger when the spell is cast. The spell is already on the stack, it won't do anything. Sort of like if you were to violate a meddling mage in response to a grape shot. The spell has already been cast at that point. Alright, so they have 26 damage, we are dead. I mean, we just can't beat Storm. It's just not, it's kind of, kind of, kind of lame. I mean, that's just modern sometimes, unfortunately, that there are matchups that are just kind of unwinnable. And it's unfortunate that we're trying out our new deck and have to play against Storm twice. Uh, definitely not not the most fun in the world, but, you know, it's fine. It's fine. We can Chalice on two. Um, again, we didn't really know what they were playing. They had Flood Strand in play, and, you know, we didn't, we didn't definitely didn't know they were playing Storm. Um, Chalice on two is effective against them. Not going to be as effective post-war when they have answers to it. Chalice on two is really good against us, too, which is really annoying, but... All right, so damping sphere, damping sphere, mind sensor, mind sensor, rider, rider, explosives, cutting the wrath, the Nahiri, uh, these terrible cast outs. Yes, Brittany, we noticed that too. Storm guy is me. That's not Caleb. Caleb is a uh, isn't Caleb like CWS or something? Um. And then we're going to cut the walls because they're pretty bad. The abandoned. I mean, we have a lot of bad cards here, honestly, but. All right. Bringing in, honestly, Knight of Autumn as a beater isn't, isn't the end of the world either, but. What's up, Chef? How's it going, my friend? Chef. Uh, all right. I mean. We got a uh, we got a knife and a gunfight here. But we're gonna try and see if we can be a ninja. You know, 
Thanks, games. Appreciate that. If you're sitting here, welcome to the stream. My name is Davis. How's it going? This is Freshly Brewed, the uh, somewhat infrequent show where I just build a deck and play it for the first time on stream. So the raw, unedited uh, content, basically. All the, all the warts and uh, imperfections exposed. And it's a really good look into the, into the deck building process because realistically, uh, building magic decks is hard. And being able to uh, to work through it is a very important thing. So we got Chalice. We're on the play. Uh, we're going to keep. What are we going to do with this Chalice? You can try and hold it to cast on turn four, but I, I don't know. Like... No boils. Boil would be good here, too. Alright. I think I actually want to just open on Street Wraith. Hey, Daddy. Uh, okay. And then let's just uh, play Planes, I guess. Cycle. Pawn says, I really love this deck, man. Of course you do. You can't lose to it. Uh... All right. Uh, is it working? Well, of course you li you like it. You can't lose to it. Smiley face. Idea school will be on my stream and uh, on my YouTube. Uh, okay, so a little advertising in chat, of course. All right, so uh, cycle, draw another drift. It's not very good. Untap, draw. And I'm almost positive we're chalicing on one here. Yeah. Yeah. It's, asshole drift's not great. We're going to chalice on one. I know chalice on two is much better, but... We need to get somewhere, I think. And if they remand it on turn three and just kill us, it's terrible. Like this, and we have to kind of hope that their hand's not very good, and not good hands have all the like, cantrips. So no opt and no cantrip. We're dead. We are dead. We are so dead. We also have avalanche riders too. So oh, sure. Never mind. We're in the game. Oh wow, we have street wraith too. Oh man, we can go Astral Drift and then possibly double Stone Rain next turn. Give me the Astral Drift. We could Night of all. I was thinking, I don't even care. Give me the Astral Drift all day. Let's go. Untap land, please. They're also missing a land drop here. That sucks. It means they definitely have Remand. Oh boy, okay. Um, That is not an untap land. Man, they definitely have remand. I almost don't even want to cast a spell, honestly. Um, they're obviously done have a land. They have five cards in hand and no cantrips. Yeah, I'm just gonna play lands. They go. They're going to end step Metamorphose. Yeah, definitely remand. Because they, they, they would have main phased that if they uh, didn't have remand, so. I guess maybe, like, making them not burn it. So the, the, the goal is that you don't want to play into remand because you want them to make a land drop. You want them to keep missing land drops. Yeah, so we're just never going to play into it and make them just sit here and not, make, not play lands until we have multiple things to do in one turn. That's the goal. Uh, yeah, just play tap lands, they go. I think, yeah. Oh, duh. <laughs> they, they could have cantrips, but they have, we have chalice, sure. Uh, so they're gonna cast a cantrip to put a counter on area flame, sure. Draw land, sure. Fetch, sure. Will they tap out? Serum visions, sure. And still every man up. So let's draw a land here. Actually, I think we cycle our drift here. Let's try and draw a land. So we can go night, they remand it, and then night. So let's cycle this. 
awkward. Uh, cycle this. God damn it. Damn it, come on. Um... I mean, now they've played the land. I guess we're just casting a spell. Ugh. No. Just play with Lance, I go. There's just no point in playing a spell under remand yet when I can't play another spell also. Sure. Alright, so I'm gonna cycle this also, show draw lands. That's pretty good. Mind sensor, cute. Alright, so now I cast Night of Autumn, they remand it, we should cast it again. Of course, it resolving is also cool too, so. Should we run that? We used to go to 15, we go to 10, I mean. And then we kill the Aria Flame, which is great. So kill that. They have four cards in hand. We still have the Street Wraith to protect this thing. And then next turn, we have Double Stone Rain. Mind sensor. All right, so let's cast. Let's cast the rider first, I guess. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Let's go! Let's go! We get some hype for this, please, because uh, we are definitely doing it right now. I'm sorry, dismember what? The Street Wraiths have been insane, by the way. They've been so good. That's the that's the, the easiest easiest part of this has been the Street Wraiths. They've been awesome. That was a piece that the old version was like was missing. Double dismember? Alright. You win this round, opponent, but I still killed that land, alright? So take a million. Uh draw land. Get back all these lands, play this, attack. So I guess I should have loam first then, right? Yeah, that was dumb. So I would have had, I would have had an extra. I didn't, did not think they would have two kill spells in their hand. That was definitely very unexpected. Um, I guess I should have set a stop for their main. Oopsie. All right, we'll just cycle and not. We could have flickered it, made it bigger or something, but I didn't. It's in their end step now, and so it won't come back till my turn. So, no on that. Cycle here. This game should be pretty over, I think. Uh, draw. Street Wraith is cute. Uh, dredge Loam. Combat. All right. Uh. Cycle with this. Don't dredge. Renin six, sure. Uh, we're not gonna loan. We're gonna, we should, we're gonna kill him. Our, kill him next turn. So, I'll just chill and have mind sensors available. I guess. This comes in. Um, they're gonna end step Manamorphos with one card in hand. Sure. Add a blue and a red. Sure. 
Why would the divs on their end step? They gain four life. So you don't like, get cheesed out by a small grape shot. We have two threats anyway, and a Ren and Six, so. We did it! We did it! All right, take that, Aria Flame. Okay, let's do that again. Let's do that again. That was cool. That was cool. Scumbag, I was insulting off in chat. It was a smiley face. I was very friendly in chat, for the record. Thank you very much. I put a smiley face. And then, and then bump my YouTube. Alright? That's just good marketing. Just good marketing. Uh, trying to draw gifts to cast in the end step? That makes sense. Alright, so... Let's bring in the third Knight of Autumn, because they have uh, Arya. And cut something crappy. We thragged us, giving thragged us pretty bad. Uh, yeah, sure. We can bring in, honestly, bring in a, a purge also for Aria Flame. Sure. Thragged us is pretty terrible. Let's do this. Avalanche Riders, riding dirty. Riding dirty. If there's a world you want, like, the other Celestial Purge over, maybe, like, Renegade Rally or something, but. Okay. Not the best hand. Um, opponent Mulligans to six. Purge, yeah, we should, we should, we should, we should put the Purge in, probably. Maybe we could have Shade the Drifter, too, honestly. Drift's not very good against them. We have Purge and Chalice. Opponent Mulligan to six, we're on the play, but we have only two lands, which is really, really bad. Um, but we can witness back a fetch land and have Purge for like Aria Electromancer. I'm gonna keep, just, just get lucky. Pizza Goldfish. So, tough question here. Do we play the Thicket or not? Because we definitely want the third land. And if we cycle it and don't draw a land for three turns, it's going to be the worst. Yeah, we'll just play it. Want to look for every opportunity to, to not play our cycling lands, but visions. First on the bottom top, this one's gonna go. Dougie, thanks to bits, my friend. Appreciate it. I appreciate you. Thanks for watching. And they went bottom, bottom. All right, that's a start. Temple Garden, sure. Um. Just gonna get our Sacred Foundry. All right, Chalice on one. We do have Witness. We do have Witness. There's no Spell Snare in their deck. They're playing a uh, playing Storm. They have Lightning Bolt. Weird. And Brawl. That's not cool. Not cool at all. Now, what we're gonna do is. No, we're gonna we're gonna to astral drift out the Baral on our end step. I think is that even worth it? So there's gonna be a streamer charity event this Saturday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, Scooter's running it. It's gonna be the main coverage will be on Todd Anderson's Twitter. I mean, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Twitch. And then there's like 32, there's 32, 32 streamers playing in it. Maybe 16. Uh, Pioneer. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Raising money for charity. It's gonna be really really cool. This uh, Saturday, 3 p.m. 
All right, yeah, we're just going to play Drift. If they, if they kill us on three cards, whatever. We could, like, end step Drift, slide this out for one turn, and then then what? We can't do it again next turn unless we draw a Cycling Land. So let's we'll play Drift. If they kill us, then three cards, they kill us. So be it. Will it be streamed on, de on a delay? Probably. The charity is... Uh, probably not, actually, because it's just all streamers, so we all, we all trust each other, you know? Uh, what's charity? It's for coronavirus stuff. Uh, I don't know it offhand. I think it's direct, direct relief, I think. All right. They're not killing us. Thankfully. Thankfully. And now we got to find ourselves a cycling land. Uh... I mean, it's not a cycling land, but it's fine, I guess. All right. Uh, will the ad revenue go to charity? Uh, no, it's, you know that's that's a really hard thing to to do. But we'll, we'll be raising money through through uh, direct donations. Should be really awesome. All right. I guess we'll do this, and then we'll play it and crack it and just. Loam, I guess. So let's get the mountain. Cast loam. And uh, try and uh, we'll dredge next turn. You know, we're uh, doing okay here. Yeah, calculating ad revenue and stuff is pretty is pretty complicated. I think we're going to be doing it, you know, just through donations and stuff. So go to uh, eleven. All right, their, their hand's been pretty bad this game. Obviously, our child is hopefully doing some work, too, but dredge long and hit some cycling lands. We hit Plains, Avalanche Rider, Avalanche Rider. So, bad news, no cycling new lands. Good news, we have a lot of Avalanche Riders. <laughs> bad news, they have a lot of lands, I guess. It doesn't really actually matter that much, but... Um, so, we're going to fetch and loam and play Witness... So loan back two lands. I guess we have rent six too, right? Whatever, sure. Oh, I I tap wrong, but it, it's fine. Uh, get back avalanche riders, I guess. And yes, plus. All right. I mean, we need a cycler. Um, we have drift. In a, in a pinch, I guess. They are flooding really bad. Uh, all right, it's so untap. Uh, dredge. There's thicket. Yeah, this should probably be a be a lot of it. Rider my own land. That's a little. You know, maybe this turn if it came down to it, we could have done that. But oh wait, we got a plus. Found our thicket, so I think we're in pretty good shape here. We have thicket. Uh, play avalanche riders. I guess we'll kill the green, because they just have a million of every other color anyway, so. Uh, oh, crap. I didn't get the right. I didn't zap right. All right whatever. Uh. Sure. I gotta play that turn a little cleaner, but um, there's also a Knight of Autumn and another Avalanche Riders in the graveyard, so we can like. Okay, we're gonna say go. Um, no, we're gonna do this now. They could have Dismember though. That's fine. Eh. It's a little sloppy, but. They could have Dismember here, I suppose. They don't. And then we... Say go. Kill a land. Then on our turn, our upkeep, we're going to cycle Astral Drift to blink the Witness and the Riders. Get a Riders back. And then play another Riders. <laughs> it's funny though, because they're, they're just so flooded. Um, that... 
like the the LD part doesn't matter that much, but it's still cool. So response to this uh, doesn't matter how we tap. We'll cycle Astral Drift, we'll exile the Riders, and the Witness. I, oh, it's not, not, not going to come back yet. Man, it's, it's, whatever. That uh, draw. So I can't. I can't ride her again. But um, okay, no. It's sloppy. Oh boy. All right. Uh, get back a tranquil thicket. Play Damping Sphere. On our end step, bring stuff back. Let's get back Avalanche Riders. Target this land. And we're going to cycle step and exile their Baral. So they don't have Baral on their turn. And then cycle this, exile our riders. Pawn's trooper, I agree. Cast opt, sure. This is going to be like opt, 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 concede, I think. No? All right, so that's that, and this, and this, and get back chalice, I guess. I don't think it really matters what we do, honestly. Yes. So, a point obviously drew horribly this game. Uh, but, what are you going to do? We'll take it. We'll take the W, hopefully. Another Brawl? Uh, sure. Okay. Uh, untap. Bring back Brawl. Bring back Avalanche Riders. Target a land. Um, and I guess we're going to cycle Street Wraith. Target Riders. Do it all again. Mind sensor also. We probably shouldn't die, I guess. Let's uh there are two play Ch Chalice on two. Cast Ritual Response? Sure, all right, sure. I think this game's locked up. I mean, I'm so dumb. Uh, all right, so fetch a land. Oh, I got a shock? God damn it. <sighs> Whatever. The goal is to gain life here, so we don't get cheesed out by something, but I don't think it's actually possible to lose this point, so. Dismember targeting the Knight of whatever, sure. They have zero cards in hand, plus targeting a cycling land. Uh, say go. Avalanche Riders comes back, kill a land. Total victory. Uh, so post combat main cycle street wraith on avalanche riders comes back into play. Kill a land. Echo ability on the stack. 
Cycle Tranquil to get. Apollo just being a trooper, honestly. Flicker this. Draw a card. No echo. Um, we can't play things that cost two. Sure. Uh, um, plus on Tranquil Thicket. Play Knight of Autumn. I'm going to keep going. I'm, I'm, I'm having a great time. Go for the Flawless Victory. Oh, we can't remove the Brawl, I don't think. Um, unfortunately, you know. Play Mind Sensor. Oh, I cost some more. Whatever. F6. How much Rider goes back? Kill this. Uh, unique Combat Step. Post Combat Step. And, I mean, they're going to have no board, like, on and off, you know? Cycle that, untap, pay echo. All right. That was fun. That was pretty cool, right? Right? We beat Storm. We did it. Fantastic. You love it. You love to see it. All right, so two and three. Um, I think we definitely identified some issues. Again, if you're just tuning in, welcome to the stream. My name's Davis. This is Freshly Brewed, the show where I just brew a deck and play it uh, totally on... A warts and all, just first draft. And uh, this is Naya Slide. Despite some kind of poor matchups, um, the next thing pretty sweet, honestly. Um, you know, we're a Chalice of the Void deck for sure. Uh, cast that was bad. I think Lightning... I think Lightning Helix is definitely a possibility for uh, for the main deck in the cast out slot. Uh, Helix helps us survive and is also a, uh, a good card to retrace off Ren 6. Now, the, the issues we found. Six we have like a list of issues we found. Issues. We all got them. So does this deck. Ren Six had nothing to ultimate. Um, there were no, no, nothing to really uh, to retrace off of the the Ren Six. That's issue number one. Uh, issue number two was that cast out is just a terrible magic card. <laughs> Great. Uh, issue number three. Cyborg. Boil. Boil, boil, boil on the sideboard for sure. Uh, definitely want a little help against Counterspell decks and some Graveyard Hate of some kind. Probably Graph Digger's Cage. Although, because I mean, I don't think we want Chalice against the uh, the Graveyard decks. Maybe we do. Some sort of Graveyard Hate is necessary. What is it going to be? I'm not really sure. Can't play Path if you're playing Chalice. Can't play any cards that cost one. Hence why Helix is pretty cool. Uh, Mana Base was good. Um, Field of the Dead was good in the grindy matchups. So it was very cool. The wall bosses, wall elements are fine, honestly. Definitely very reasonable. Um, Cyborg needs some work. Cyborg needs some work. One choke, two boil, something like that. Yeah, some amount of, of those cards for sure. The deck was super sweet. So I'll work on this deck at some point. Maybe you'll see it again on stream or on YouTube, of course. And uh, please let me know your thoughts in chat. If you're watching on YouTube, let me know your thoughts in the comments. This is a collective process here. We're a community. We all work together. It's not too close, you know, social, social distancing and all. So, uh, Nihiri, we drew it once and it was good. Uh, Hunter, resub, thanks so much. So, that's it for this deck. We have another Freshly Brewed to play, though. It's going to be a Pioneer deck. It's going to actually be a pretty cool deck. I'm, I like this one. Ashiok's Oblivion. This deck's coming up next, but for all you YouTube folks, that'll be in a different video. All right, sorry, Mario, your deck is in a different video. YouTube folks, I love you. Please take three, 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 take three seconds, like, comment, subscribe. Help me out a ton. Really, really helps me out a lot. Free way to support me. You know, we're all in this together, so I love y'all. Thanks, YouTube. Appreciate it.